Hello, Fightful Faithful. It's a show. It's on Tuesdays. I'm going to do the intro right now because I'm scared Alex is going to resign. If if I'm I don't this, jump in and do... This, I'm this close. <laughs> I don't jump I'm in this and say... close. I swear to God. It's the Tuesday NXT post show for uh, Sour Graps here. That's what we're doing. We're doing this, so please leave a thumbs up on this video. Please get in your Super Chats and your Humper Chats at HumperChats.com and subscribe to FightfulSelect.com. If you are waiting for a once-in-a-lifetime I Was Right run from Sean Ross Sapp, you can get that on his Twitter account. But if you're waiting for all the details of Mercedes Monet up here tomorrow, mm -hmm. you can check that on FightfulSelect.com. I'm sure there will be more information on that as we go, but we were right again. Uh, but plenty more scoops back there. Plenty of contract news. Uh, unfortunate news about Sammy Guevara's, ex uh, I'm sorry, suspension. I almost said extension. Suspension. Santana's release went up this week. Tons of stuff happening on FightfulSelect.com, as well as the Q&A that Sean does every week, which I always think is one of the most underrated assets of Fightful Select. But the most value that you can find is me and my partner in Sour playing video games on <laughs> Fightful Select on Mondays and doing pay-per-view paywalled post shows. Sure. Um, you know what's crazy, Alex, other than... How's that? Let's well, let's do this. Let's do topography puns. I know that seems nerdy, but we were no. talking about the highs no. and the lows. No, we're not doing that. We're the, we're gonna let the we're gonna let the we're we're going to let the people decide because I'm sure they will actually give me some things to laugh about. We're we're this is very narrow, so have fun. Kiss puns. Everyone wants kiss puns. So if you want to throw some things in there about the band, that's fine too. Everyone wants kiss puns. Let's do it. Because you know what? They're not going to get topography puns. We're not getting anything. Come on. Highs and lows, peaks and valleys. Roller coaster puns? No, just kiss puns. Let the kids in the chat do what they want and, and have, them, have them do things about Because honestly, I, I wash my hands of the whole thing. Well, first of all, you can't do that. But um, that's not allowed. I, I am you, washing I, my hands. Look, I'm I even can't doing the thumb. do. Remember, how, remember in COVID, they told us you had to wash the thumb too. I'm even washing the thumb. You should, and the outsides where all the germs live. People don't know that, but uh, yeah, this had some real good stuff and some real bad stuff. Um, that just made, I mean, absolutely no sense. That, that honestly, the the good was generally generationally great and the bad is so bad i don't want to generationally do bad anymore. like this i don't is... want to do the job i don't want to do this job i want to hand in my <laughs> resignation i hereby tender my resignation no back. denied is, but again like that's that those that's are some peaks and valleys those, those are. are some those are some, those are some great topographical references that you just pointed out that we're not allowed to do puns about because people want no. to talk about kisses do they, they want to talk about kisses kate well, Kylie just made kiss. Kylie just made my night though, because this she says you all are amazing, beautiful people, and I thank you. See, well, thank you. That makes Kylie's it all worthwhile. That makes Kylie's it all that, that makes it all worthwhile. Kylie was like, you know? "Are you gonna do a collision post show, you cowards?" And we did on Sunday. <laughs> Poor Kylie. We did it on Sunday just for her. We did. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So, anyway, leave a um, leave a thumbs up on this video because we need your we yeah. need your approval and we need your love and we need your support tonight because man this ended it ended in a it ended in a way yeah that happened for sure <clears throat> okay so zach says haven't watched nxt yet just wanted to send some love to my homies in the bangs bangs sour gang well thank you very very much for that bangs are on point speaking yeah. of on point corey brennan scoops once again on point subscribe to fightful select for those as well it like i, I uh, at this point i would rather he have a few of them wrong because one of the scoops yes. he had tonight made zero sense reading it hours beforehand and somehow makes less sense now and Should i just wish that i just blame wish the Corey. Thing, i just wish the thing that he said hadn't happened and that he was wrong about one thing once 
that between between the time when he found out about it and reported it and the time they did the ridiculous thing that they did, somebody backstage developed a brain and realized it was a bad idea. But no, that's just not. No. Well, it was a taped episode too, so that wasn't going to be the case. But um, I, I'm sorry, Corey doesn't miss. So you, that's no, not going to be the he case here. Not at all. No. Um, your, your, your dad is upset. My dad's upset. No topography, and I had escarpment all to be teed up. See, the Elizabeth family. I don't know what how, what is that. A, what is that a pun of, though? I don't. Escarp- well, now we'll never know because you denied us at and, the and end. A, wait, hold on. And is scarp the cage match? That could be it. Yeah. See. Good. Maybe. Um, Jada Pringle says Alex, Kate, Papa Paul, Elizabeth, sisters. Luis and all the SGS, how did the horrible booking kid mess things up tonight? Well, let me tell you, in a myriad of ways. Actually, they're just, you know what they're doing? They're just doing fallout from all the things they've messed up in the past now. Yeah, like, that was this and Roxanne's uh, promo today was a lot of that. Like they, they literally had to like do damage control. No, no, not damage guitar. All that's a different thing. That's no, on that's Fridays a stable and on also Fridays. Mondays. But um, uh, damage control on two horrible things they had done in the past. They tried to do damage control Correct. on that, and and then they were but like, then, you know what we should do? We should try an all new horrible thing to end the show. You know, just for it's creative for S's and G's. I don't want to get demonetized on yet. I'll do it later when I just let no, no, slip no, no. a Those, string of f bombs. That's for sours and graps, is what S and G means. There you go. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, uh, spring is coming or already here in the Northeast, says your dad. Greetings, yeah, Team Kalex, the Council, the Sisters, Louise, Sir J W Pringle, and all the SGS. It was like seventy three degrees here, and like with fifty mile an hour winds, just constantly. It's just it's we so had- it's so fun. Crazy wind yesterday, but today was gorgeous. Mm. Jealous me. Um, Zach says, haven't watched NXT yet. Just wanted to send some love to my homies. Oh, we already said that one. <laughs> I didn't delete it. I'm not going to blame Luis for it. Get like, it. Like Sean does. I'm not, I'm not going to blame Luis for it like Sean does. That was on me. Luis is perfect and me. never done anything wrong. So that was if, on me. if Sean wants to lie to the people, that's up to yep. him. We don't do that here. Mm-hmm. Um, so we started out the night uh, where uh, an NXT team. An NXT uh, team, if you will. An NXT team. No, I won't. I won't. If I will, I won't. An NXT team. Um, uh, I'm in a I'm in a foul mood. What can I say? I'm gonna I'm gonna no sell more of your jokes than than usual. I'm sorry. I'm letting you. I'm war. I'm warning you and the people ahead of time. An NXT team. Uh, fought a SmackDown team in an NXT tournament, and the NXT team lost. Yep, that is what happened. It's a two-way street, pal. You know, sell me. I'm fine. You're going to be out here flapping in the wind, doing William Regal impressions, and summoning the ghosts of Dusty Rhodes. You can do that all on your own, pal. All right? You know, sell my NX team joke. You're getting it right the fuck back. We are out of the five minute window. A Carson. Sorry to Dan Housen. Yep. The <sighs> NXT team lost. That is what occurred. Happy? Should be. You made your bed. <laughs> Take, Take a, a joke, joke Bob. <laughs> you. You fucking bump for me, dude. <laughs> We're not taking that. That move looks dumb. We're not taking it. Everyone on the, the internet, everyone on the internet it. hates you and your stopwatch. <laughs> I don't even have a stopwatch. I go to cage match and the match times are there and I add them and that makes people mad that I can add four numbers. Right. Um, so there's a, a, a SmackDown team that's in this tournament to face uh, the the Wolf Dogs in a um, in a match at WrestleMania weekend. They are also in a, a different tournament 
or at least a qualifying match to yeah. to to win the the undisputed. Wouldn't it be great? I mean, this is not going to happen in, ever. But wouldn't it be funny if on the same exact day the LWO won the NXT champ championships in the tag team division there, but also won the undisputed tag team championship? This is what they are telling us is a possibility. There are other tag teams in NXT. You sure. don't have to. You don't have to bring one from SmackDown. You, you don't. Well, not, I will say the only necessary. thing that I like about this is at least they had like a rep because they have not had regular tag team reps on the main roster at all. So mm -hmm. at least they were like in action here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's weird that they will throw together teams for the Dusty Cup, but for this, so like we gotta. And I know they called teams down for the Dusty Cup too, but like. I don't know. Throw throw people together. Can Briggs and I mean, Jensen co I, Briggs listen, and Jensen. I really <laughs> that is very funny. I I genuinely love what they're doing now with the LWO boys. Yes, um, it's good. With 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 Del Toro and Wild. Wild is is he's decided, okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be the one in all the brands, I guess, who just does ridiculous stuff. Like he did a, he, he jumped off the back of, I think it was Nima and did this, this yes. huge plancha over the top rope, which was insane. Um, he's, he's, he's a, he's a crazy man. And he's always DJ Z almost died because he was doing crazy bumps in Mexico. And like he, he he landed wrong and like had horrible internal injuries from taking a terrible bump doing a dive in Mexico. That was like 2016, I think. And um, and now he's he's went through all the way through the planet NXT, went all the way through NXT. Now he's on the main roster. Like, what if we tried it again and see what happens? So um, I'm happy he didn't die. I'm happy he didn't die tonight either. So. Um, this this was a fun match. You knew LWO was going to win. They don't have a prayer of winning the the triple threat thing. No. Um, we all we we know for a fact that that Anderson and Gallows are or the the big the good brothers or the the OC the whatever how whatever you call them now. The um, o OC Bullet Club brothers. Yeah, there you go. Nailed it. Um, the Ooh. yeah. <clears throat> Uh, instead of Bullet Club Gold, we'll call them Bullet Glo Bullet Club Leather. How about that? Just because of the because of the cause aesthetic. Because of, of the well, I was thinking that, but also like the the, the tans. Oh, okay. um, that's fair. Yeah. So Bullet Club Leather is is definitely going to be your next NXT Tag Team Champs. BCL. Um. So BCL. BCL. Yeah. BCL. Um. <laughs> The they're the Bang Bang Sunscreen Gang, and they are. Um, sorry, see what I did? Um, I laughed at your this, joke. Not the, that hard. I, I, I appreciate not it. Not hard. Thank not you. hard to this do, is, Alex. This is what I do to cope. I I do mean spirited comedy at the expense of people I've never met who are probably perfectly fine people. But I've decided just to just to, to focus on that one thing. Anyway, um, cope, bro. I'm coping. Um, it's a defense mechanism. Alex Copeland. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so the LWO win, um, uh, scripts is out there and it's very funny. We, if, if you watch the stuff behind the paywall last night, there was a, a gauntlet match, uh, that I had Chad Gable win. Thank God. He didn't win one last night for damn, that's for damn sure. Um, but he beat scripts, but it was a different version of scripts. It was not this version of scripts. That is so um, the, the least version, the like, least like this version of scripts that it could possibly be. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So, I mean. It's, good little opener. The match is it good. Was a, it was a good little opener. It's fine. It's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, uh, the, I'm just going to, I'm going to group all this stuff together. Um, uh, Hank and Tank get confronted by the Wolf Dogs, who are actually like pro Hank and Tank. Hey, come on, they boys! You're 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 people. this close to to stand and deliver. You know what I mean? So, what do you got? Get like, hyped. We, we are no we are no strangers to coming off the gridiron 
and coming into wrestling ourselves. We're rooting for you boys, but you got to get it together and figure out your strategy for how you're going to beat the OC next week. Uh, OC cut a little promo on everybody. It's fine. It's very much Gallows and Anderson-esque. It's fine. Um, yes. And then backstage. Uh, Alex, one thing I realized is that you and I need lightning bolt shirts. We do. You see, like the but, Hank and Take with the yeah, logo. So, so we a, need like K A eight. Lightning Bolt Lex. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. But like, hmm, is there a way to make a lightning bolt grape situation happen? I don't know. Well, lightning, we'll a lightning bolt made out of grapes. Can we do that? I don't know. We're gonna find out. Okay. Cool. Maybe it's just maybe it's just purple lightning. It could be that, but that just kind of feels like lightning, right? I don't know. Is lightning purple normally? You know what that's like, though? That's the judgment day. I don't want any of that stuff. No, get, get that out of here. Honey, honey, Alex is going to have a really long night. <laughs> it's the longest. Um, mm -hmm. Lieutenant Colonel says, I don't like mom and dad fighting. We're not fighting. It's, it's We healthy. so are. It's healthy to have arguments, but the kids, don't worry. We love you. Blah, blah, blah. Um... So Thea Hale was left on her own by, by Jasmine and JC who are hanging out elsewhere uh, and tr tries to talk to Duke and, and um, Andre Chase. At one point she just screams, I have friends. Um, and, uh, and it was funny because it was like she was trying to convince herself of that fact, but literally seven seconds later, I happen to have found somebody who uh, also does not like Keanu James and Izzy Dame. And here she is. So there's no reason to like, I have friends! Because you, you yes. have the proof, you have proof of that. Standing literally five feet that way. They're right off, she's right off, right off camera. You don't need to scream at them to like, to like prove to them and to yourself that you have friends. But she's kind of always screaming all the time. Right, I will tell you, this is, this is uh, by far, uh, the best written promo they had Thea Hale say tonight. Yes. Of the two. So I we guess we had that's two something. different shows tonight. Like we had some really good stuff. And then we had some mm -hmm. horrific stuff. Mm -hmm. This falls into the really good category. What happened after her match was not very good. Uh, and I also just I have friends. Look, here's one now. Drives me nuts. Like, oh, mm -hmm. the convenient timing of my friend being here. Yeah. Is a little uh she couldn't have been like, Yeah, I texted her, she's on her way. Like just, me mm -hmm. just a little something of man, I wish I had a friend that was ready to walk into the shop. My god, mm -hmm. Kalani Jordan is here, <laughs> just like always kind of gets me. Mm -hmm. But um I like that we are getting to see some more sincerity from Thea Hale. Like we're definitely starting to get a little bit more of a layer than as Joel Pearl calls her, like cocaine brought to life or whatever, like sentient cocaine. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like that. It just feels like, okay, so is Duke Hudson going to stop carrying around a trophy? Like, what are we doing with the tag team part of this? What they're out of debt now? What? Like, there's no follow-up created there, for there. There never is a now what? That's the problem here. There should be a now what? You wasted a lot of time with this storyline of, of them being in debt to have zero payoff for it. The payoff always, I thought, was supposed to be he gets them out of debt at the same time they reclaim the tag team championship. Of course. And in no way is that true. That is now true. they're just like, they're just, they literally won matches to like, to... Like they literally, they won and then they got out of debt. And you have this now former member of the student body, JC Jane, calling them losers in storyline with nothing to actually refute that. Uh, yeah, it's. Yep. I, I really like Duke Hudson and I want to see him wrestle successfully. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Is that okay um, with you? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay with me. Yeah. 
Anyway, the person that, that uh, Thea Hale found was Kalani Jordan. Spoiler alert, Kalani Jordan does not end up being her tag partner tonight because reasons. <clears throat> so, um, Roxanne Perez. You did what you did with her title run. She brings it up. A year ago at Roadblock was the night that she beat Mako Satomura. We haven't seen Mako since. Um, and afterwards, she collapsed. And then they took the title from her. And um, she was back in time to be in the ladder match at Stand and Deliver, but she lost the ladder match. And Indy was the champion for a month. And then she was in a triple threat match to just her and, and Indy and Tiffany Stratton. And Indy retained on a f- fucked up ankle. And then you immediately drafted Indy Hartwell to the main roster where she did basically nothing for a year. Correct. Uh, and she had to relinquish the title. So Tiffany won the title. Was it a tournament? I don't remember. Who cares? Um, and then Tiffany um, lost it to Becky Lynch because Tiffany said something weird in the promo, I think. And then you had the Becky Lynch run, which was good for a while it lasted, but ended up then moving it to Lyra, who has not had what you'd call a barn burner of a title reign. Correct. And then and then they added this Ted and Paxley thing to the whole deal and have never really explained why Ted and Paxley is fixated on Lyra in any way. And Lyra seems to be okay with it now, but they've never, never explained what the delineation was of being not okay with it, and now she is. Then there was the whole Lola Vice thing. She won the breakout tournament. She held the held the at a glance contract forever. And then she cashed in in the middle of the one on not not waiting until it was close to being over no, like or, five right minutes after, into it. or right after the winner won. She did it five minutes into the match and then Tatum ended, ended up being part of the match and Roxanne lost it that way. You were going to do Lyra versus Shotzi, but Shotzi got hurt. So you did this last legend thing. Lola Vice finally shows up on TV for the first time in what feels like months tonight doing some weird rando backstage bit. Like the the way like if I'm this is not by all by any means exhaustive this rundown of the past year of the women's division, but does any of that sound planned? Like this was like this is what we had in mind the whole time, and it's a great idea because to me none of it sounds that way. It sounds like they've been flying by the seat of their pants for a damn year, and and here we are. The state the state of it is what it is. And along the way, we decided the best thing we could do with Roxanne was to turn her heel, put way too much eye makeup on her, have her come out, cut a promo well, blaming blaming the fans, fact, of course, putting putting pl- blaming the fans not supporting her enough for why she had to turn a uh, uh, heel and try to break Lyra's arm, and then ridiculously assume that that meant she was going to be handed the title yeah that was really as, weird. as opposed to as opposed to being punished for out of nowhere for no reason attacking the, the current champion after a tag match that she wrestled none of this makes a lick of sense and that's the best thing i can say about it this promo was not well written and because it wasn't well written, I have no way to really judge Roxanne's delivery of the promo because a lot of it was like, hey, let's call attention to all of our flaws in our booking, but also let's not blame ourselves for it. <laughs> God forbid. Let's blame the fans for it for some reason. And it was all written very like hackneyed and I, I this I, man, I just I cannot fathom what they have done. With 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 Roxanne in the past year, they would get to this point. So, no. So the good of it to me is, I think she might really win at Stand and Deliver, which makes me happy. Um, I think it's very possible. 
it very much does feel like, well, the plan was Core Jade, so now we're going to transfer Cora's creative to Roxanne, which does not feel great. Um, and then I actually feel like from a delivery standpoint, it was one of her stronger ones. I think she just had some more time with it. So she was able to kind of settle in because she she gets some some promos, but they're mostly backstages. Um, mm -hmm. So I think she she handled it well, considering. But from the moment they said, of course, I had anxiety from carrying this women's division on my back. I was right. I was like, oh, no, because I knew what this was going to be. And it was going to be something that made no sense, unfortunately, because like, here's the like she was making some good points and still she started doing the the obvious heel promo tropes. Yeah, once I've been exactly. carrying this division on my back for four months. She had can one you defense. Write a heel promo that does not say that. If you can't no, you can't. But like, no, they can't. You know, they can't try. do it I either has it. to it has to be that and it has to be blaming the fans, or it has to be someone not having the balls. That's usually a face thing because it's like, oh, gee, they said balls yeah. or you bitch was the big one for a lot of time. But it got so when she was making good points, I was happy because there were there were things that they attempted to do that connected the overarching pieces of her character that it was nice to see them at least attempt to tie okay where am i now and how do we thread that back to the moment i lost the championship i appreciate that there was an attempt there however the booking has been so truncated from the moment she lost the title to now that you can't authentically weave anything really that makes that work especially because the thing that she said at the end that i liked was my title that i never really lost because she didn't really lose it. But she's done nothing but really lose since. And she's had many opportunities. So it's like, that's what, to me, Ava should have come out and said, was like, you had shots, though, girl. Like, you, you had mm -hmm. chances. Um, you might have not really lost it, but it's not a lack of opportunities because she's had here's, it. Here's, here's what, here's the, 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 the nuance that will always be lacking in the, in NXT, but what they have actually tried to do some of on the main roster is you could easily have had Ava come out and specifically say, stripping you of the title was wrong. I wasn't the GM at the time. Personally, that's not a decision I would have made. But since then, you have had multiple opportunities to get your title back and you have not done it. And while I feel for you having the style stripped from you, I can't just strip it from Lyra, especially stripping it from her and handing it to the woman who put her in the hospital. Do you understand how crazy that sounds, Roxanne? With all due respect, no, we're not doing that. In fact, you're suspended. Like, do that, but no, then Tatum Paxley runs out and she has to fight Tatum Paxley off and then they get separated and then we're getting Roxanne versus Tatum next week, during which Lyra will come back and then they'll set up the match for Sam to deliver. But like, it, it's, it is what it is. Like these these promos never really... The, the, the carrying the division on my back thing, I'm surprised she didn't have her say, put some respect on my name. Yeah. Um, like there's just, it just, yeah, it, it doesn't, none of this makes a lot of sense. And what I like, well, it's like, okay, so Roxanne getting the title back is good, but like. Is this version faith, of her? Yeah. You, you have faith in them booking this version of Roxanne Perez as a heel champ. To, is that going to turn around the division to you? Cause I don't know. Like we'll, they, they barely gave her a chance to be the baby face champion. Before they did whatever they did oh. with this this thing, so like like I don't know what I don't know what heel Roxanne thing is. You know what I mean? I don't know where where that goes. Is that is that leading to Thea Hale as champion? Maybe like, they're worried Cora is going to be a face when she comes back. Uh, maybe Sol Ruka, Sol Ruka, maybe. Um, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, she just doesn't read as a heel to me. And I'm so sick of you're a heel, wear more black, have more eye makeup. Cause you know what? Tatum Paxley comes out. 
you know what? They look exactly the freaking same. <laughs> they do. That's the problem. Yeah. I was like, you look like Rock Band with bangs. And way too much black eye makeup. I listen. Both are wearing black. Both are wearing black. Um, I I think what the, what you the easy way to describe to to differentiate them is I believe Tatum was wearing black lipstick, and Roxanne was wearing bright red lipstick. Therefore, they're different people. Um, Obviously, it's Louise, so weird to me because. I've said it before, but I feel like the prodigy is such an easy gimmick to have heel or face or mm. character to have heel or face. And she could have just as easily been this mm. promo could have been, you know what? I'm the prodigy. I had the most successful rookie year of anybody in this company. Mm -hmm. And I have been stifled should... every step of the way from other women here and lack of opportunities right. and being forced to give up my title and all these things. Yep. And I'm the freaking prodigy and I'm going to show what? everyone again. When she said, I'm the most decorated woman in the history of NXT, I was like, well, hold on a second. And then she was like, no, NXT champion, NXT tag champion, um, uh, breakout, breakout tournament, tournament winner, winner. Uh, and, and the, 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 the thing they do at deadline, the iron, iron survivor winner. No yeah. one else has done all, all those things. I'm that's it. I, I win. And, and I think you, I, I don't think you need to go full heel and blame the fans yet. No, have the fa have the fans be on your side because you're taught you'll tell them the truth because a lot of the fans agree, like the booking has kind of shafted her, and we're still waiting for that one on one. Like Roxanne, Roxanne can be a baby face who's pissed right now. She doesn't have to be a heel casting blame on the fans yet. If you need to get to that point, at least give her some time being a heel who's making some good points as opposed to, I carried this division on my back for four months and none of you even care about me anymore. Don't, don't do that to her. Especially yeah. Mindy Rose had the title for like a hundred years. Yeah. So it'd be like, I carried it for four months. I'm like, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't. That's not like that. Doesn't feel like backbreaking work. Yeah, um, Louise saying that uh, the writing made Ro Rocks look like a freaking liar in the worst way possible. Her delivery was great. The content was terrible, and he says that he still thinks this is just a placeholder, and that Roxanne will go to the main roster after stand and deliver and do what? Is she gonna get a character overhaul? Because I don't know what I don't know what you do with this. Like this is this is heel Liv Morgan, is what this is. It's also. To what story? Because it would have been perfect for Bailey if she was a face and she came up and helped out Bailey. But that's not where that's going to go. Yeah, there's some interesting stuff here. Um, <laughs> Shabugan says, when the first words you hear after tuning in are Roxanne Perez, <sighs> then you feel it feels like we're talking about another reason why Brett was right. Um <laughs> And and Louise says it would she would do better in Rain Roster doing nothing than here doing this. So I, I agree with eh, you on that. Yeah, that's fair. Um so here's 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 a couple of good here's a, here's a good thing. Here's a good thing. There were two that's not a good thing, this is a great thing. The other thing was better than this, but this was also a great thing. Tony is sitting down. Having a little, a, a little, a little Chianti with some, with some pasta, with some, uh, hey, just like Mama used to make, um, with all, with his whole family in his restaurant. Uh, Luca's there. He says, uh, "By the way, uh, by the way, Don, I took care of that thing, and that other thing. Like, ah, this guy, this guy over here. Uh, this was good. Um, this was, this was all. This was a fun little with all his whole family, and then Ilya walks in." And everybody gets up and leaves, and Ilya and the Don, and I love that he sits there and he goes, Tony! Like, just, just that, like, like he's like, I'm proud of you! Look, at you've got this you've got this title match! This is the good stuff that you've done! Um, but you have to understand, I said to Liver, I'm not losing this title. And then uh, Tony's like, is that so? And in comes Luca, and, and Sax, they just pick him up by his elbows and drag him through the kitchen. Um, and I love that Tony takes the time to take the last bit of his wine, set it down, pick up his hat. And, uh, I wanted to bring the, I wanted him to bring the title with him. I don't know how the title got in the car later because nobody picked it up from the, from the, from the thing. But, um, 
Uh, but he wanted to take a tie with him. And when he got out there, and really it was already in the trunk of the car, I was like, I kind of wanted him to walk out there and like Luca was like in a like halfway in a dumpster and Stax was knocked out. And um and uh because earlier, oh here's what you know I wanted because I love the line where he says, Hell yeah, I like you. You're lucky I like you. And like the Don likes you, that's what he says. Like no matter what happens here tonight, I want you to know that Don likes you. And then he gets taken, he gets kidnapped. And it takes him so long to get outside following them. I want him to come out and have everybody wiped out. And Ilya's still standing there. And he go, you're lucky I like you too, Tony. And then Ilya leaves. And it's like, so hard to find good help these days. Because I, I didn't think there was going to be a second vignette in the sure. The second vignette's even better than the first vignette. <laughs> Because like they're, they're, the way you describe it, the production values with the music playing over the top and like and the, cinematog yeah. the, 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 the cinematography of everything. This feels like you're in some weird, I mean, admittedly C-grade spinoff of The Sopranos. But it feels like they're doing it with like an actual budget and they're trying to make it real TV drama. As opposed to backstage, which just feels like the the lowest of rent of like Saved by the Bell or an after school special. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yes, it did. on the bridge, the exact spot where they threw two dimes over, which was so friggin' great. He say they pull him out of the trunk, and it's just Ilya and the Don talking one on one. Um, and he, he says, uh, you got power. You're the dragon, you're the mad dragon. That means something. You have power. But you don't have this kind of power. I snap my fingers, things happen. You don't want to see what happens when I snap my fingers. I do, Tony. Oh, I do. Snap your fingers. I would like to see what happens. Soon. Soon. I will. Not right now, though. So enjoy your walk back. And as he leaves. And then, then Ilya, without turning around, says, Tony, there is something that you must know. I always find a way. Tony, like, and then he gets in the car. They drive away. It's just him looking at the at the title in the thing. Two dimes his body at the bottom of the river. It's the best. It's so good. I love when they do this stuff. Do more of this. Tony's definitely losing to Dragunov, but don't get away from him being this this important yes. of a character on the show. This is so damn great. So in the first vignette, I loved you took care of the thing, yeah. And the other thing, yeah. All right. Like I was so in love with yeah. the uh the nondescript description of the things. Um and this stuff with as awesome as Tony D is, and he is Ilya being a part of this, like Ilya jumping into that world is not the direction I thought they were gonna go with this. And he's so yeah. good at it, and I love it so oh, much. He's it it does Brilliant. feel like it feels like i mean there there's this kind of thing of like the greatest hitman in the world happens to be this uh, half german half russian european national and um and the head of the of the family wants to hire him to whack one of his competitors and he won't do it for whatever reason maybe it's like oh, i want you, i want you to whack the, this guy's wife to send a message I do not do women or children, but you're going to work for me or I'm going to have you killed. Like, it feels like it's that I respect the hell out of you, but you don't want to cross me. Like, it feels like that kind of a mob movie. And I, I'm super into it. It's the it's it's the best. man. I do I, love mob vibes. And I, I love this do too. love mob vibes. I love Tony D being like, um, I've been to this part of the bridge with a few people before or whatever. And he was like, yeah. but I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> like Just the beginning of the ah, acknowledgement so of that. I was like, Oh my God, oh. this is delicious. Uh, I'm sorry. I respect everything. All the wonderful things that they did with the bloodline. None of that was cinema. This is cinema. This is cinema, cinema. right here. Cinema. It is so good. And it's also it shot cinema. cinematically. So that has the cinematic advantage, but, yeah. Yeah. um, I loved all of this. I can't believe this was on the same show as the ending of the show. Um, it is the Wild or, West out here. Or so many other things on the show. But yes, yes. Like it's, 
it's it was it was yeah. beautiful. And also, yeah. big and is still big and in my head. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Uh. She's always gonna be big and. Um. I. They. I. Louise bring up that they explained that Stax was the one who played who hit play on Trix music last week. So yeah, I like that they, they they addressed that. That was cool. Um. But yeah, this is this is. Here's the thing, you know, like there's really, there's no, there's no, there's never been a, a real connection between Tony D'Angelo and Ilya Dragunov. So the the idea that you're like, okay, we we need, we're not going to do Carmelo versus Dragunov or Trick Williams versus Dragunov at Santa Deliver, our biggest show of the year. We're going to do Tony D'Angelo because we're going to do Trick versus Carmelo. We do Tony D'Angelo, and um, there really isn't a story to justify that. And this is why it doesn't make sense to me that like the same people who are running this part of the show are running everything else. Like it has to be compartmentalized. This, this is why. I, so I always, I always feel like Tony D'Angelo writes all of his own stuff, produces it, directs it, because nothing else on the show is like this. They like it was almost like somebody said, "We don't have a story." For for the D'Angelo and and Dragunov, and Don D'Angelo's, you leave that to me. And he sits down and he writes this whole thing out, and he basically says, "Okay, so he, if I'm the mob boss, who is this guy to me? You know what I mean? And then let's figure out how to do this. And it it, it every now you I left him on the bridge in the spot where he murders all the guys that he doesn't want around anymore, and says, "Have a good walk back," like. This, that is, now the story gets to continue from here. Obviously, they're going to do more stuff next week and the week after that. Like, they're going to, by the time that Stand and Deliver rolls around, it's this is going to feel like they have been feuding for months. And they yes. will have been feuding effectively for three weeks. I mean, because they've done so much already with this particular first thing, everything that comes after this is just going to be, the not. I was going to say gravy, but it's not gravy. Parmesan cheese. Yeah, hey. Fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Just say when, and nobody says when, because who says when with Parmesan cheese? Nobody Just keep grating it. Just keep grating the Parmesan cheese. That's what's up. Uh, part of what helps here is that these two characters know themselves so well, too. Yeah. Like, we know exactly who Ilya is, because Ilya knows exactly who Ilya is. And Tony yeah. G, we've obviously had very extensive stories. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm all I'm all for all of this. This was wonderful. This was one of the best things on the show. Definitely the best thing outside the ring because Alex, what we got to see inside the ring, absolutely ruled today. Yeah, I'm of course talking about Lexus King and right, Lexus King, a manager who defeated, who, who defeated Robert Stone. Um, right. Lex Lexus King, uh, I believe he has a setup move now for his finisher that is like the Hidden Blade. Except it's a uh, it's that's the hidden balls, because like <laughs> Robert Stone was sitting up and he ran and just crotched himself on the back of Robert Stone's head. I think it was supposed to be a knee, but nowhere near his knee hit the back of Robert Stone's head. It was closer to like his balls, and I'm like that his... is a that is a considering how a different match ended tonight. Featuring members of the different of a different gender, crotching yourself deliberately on the back of another man's head feels like an odd choice. It does feel like an odd choice. Uh, that would be the yambag region, as Taz would call it. Uh, yeah, yambag yahtzee. You, he yambag yahtzee himself. He did, which feels I don't. I'm not equipped with such things, uh, but well, I well, feel we're, like we're, we're going to have to get your perspective on well, a later he's... match in the night i would say now from my perspective as somebody who does have such things i would not voluntarily yambag yahtzee myself on another on the back of another man's head um as as a, as a wrestling maneuver that is doesn't not something seem great that, I, that is not something that i would put in my own move set it That's... doesn't feel like oh the video game version of me should have this or something yeah, anything like that. yeah no that doesn't seem like a good way to go but you know what right. alex yeah. If I did have such parts, I would want uh -huh. them to be taken care of. Right. I want them to be cleaned up. I want them to be uh -huh. oh, okay. looking good. I would yes. want them to be hygienic. Right. And I would also want the most yep. recent ad that we had about mm -hmm. 
products that could do that, but I don't. Yeah. So you're going to have this mm. ad from mm. way back in previous mm. Kentucky homes from Sean Ross Sam yep. to tell you yeah. all about it. Yep. Surely you didn't think that just because I'm not physically on this show that we would shave off our ad reads, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Because we're busy shaving something else off, my friends. Make sure you have those manicured nuts with Manscaped. Get 20% off plus free shipping if you use the code FIGHTFUL at manscaped.com. Oh, man. You don't want to look like you've gone through a main event match with your nutsack when you're trying to care for them. And Manscaped makes sure that you don't with that Perfect Package 4.0. The Hygiene Bundle includes the Lawnmower 4.0, Weed Whacker, Boxers, Travel Kit, and Liquid Formulations. That Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof with advanced skin safe technology to reduce nicks and cuts and even has a light to help you with your close shave. The Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer makes sure you whack those nasty weeds in your delicate holes. And it also has proprietary skin-safe technology. But even beyond that, you get the boxers. You get the travel bag. They've got a foot duster. They've got a crop reviver. It's a ball toner, of all things. Plus the crop preserver to prevent chafing. Manscaped.com. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FIGHTFUL. Manscaped.com The most recent ad of those, but Manscaped.com. <laughs> we need to align our stuff. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, it's, it's, I'm sure it's fine. Don't. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, I'm sure it is because everything is just fine with manscaped.com code Fightful. Mm -hmm. Head on over there. Get a ton mm -hmm. of savings. Mm -hmm. It's the way of the world. It is indeed. Um, so uh, here we go. Um, uh, Shab Shabugan says there's something deeply funny about the idea that alt girl in black equals heel. Did Sean date a punk girl when he was young that broke his heart? It might have been. It might have been. been it might have been that. You never know. Um, uh, Shabugan says, the words Lexus King and Hidden Blade being used around each other <laughs> was not on my bingo card for this evening. It was not the Hidden Blade. It was the Hidden Balls. It was, it was the Hidden, hidden Balls. balls. Thank, you. Thank God they were hidden. However, yes. um, perhaps not that as a thing. Anyway, he d does that as his setup uh, for the coronation and pins, and he was going to then do it again to Robert Stone, but then Von Wagner ran out. And instead of getting in the ring to fight Lexus King, he slammed his open palms on the apron and then picked up and carried the unconscious body of Robert Stone like his wife crossing the threshold <laughs> into their honeymoon cabin back up the ramp with Robert Stone dangling from his arms. So that was how we ended that. It's true. Uh Kind of felt like Vaughn didn't really do much to help out his, his buddy. I know yeah. his friend said he had to do it himself, but yeah. uh, who would think? Excuse me. Yeah. Um, That's how excited Robert, I was about that match. Our Patrick Moore has said, a, has said in the Humper Chat um, that I feel like is unfair to Tony D'Angelo because of the way I'm going to announce it. Uh, answer it, I'm sorry. Who has more potential to make the main roster, Tony or Ilya? Now, listen, I Alex. love Tony D'Angelo. I love Tony D'Angelo. Okay. But of the two, I feel like Tony like Tony doesn't have as much potential to make the main roster as Ilya. I believe both of them will be on the main roster one day. I believe Ilya Dragunov will be the world champion. I don't believe Tony D'Angelo will. So there's obviously many layers in between those assessments. But of 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 the two, I would I would say that. So Yes. Um, yeah, they they should both be on the main roster because they're both great. And I think yeah. I think Tony D's ability to turn something very gimmicky into yeah. something that feels more character focused at any given second is special. And I think it's something that is a rare gem to have on the main roster. Uh, Ilya Dragunov is one of the best wrestlers in the world. And if you told me he was a wrestler of the year for you, I could never 
dispute that because he's unbelievable in pretty much everything he does. So Right. Very good. Um, apparently, um, SummerSlam is going to be in Cleveland this year. We're not uh, Detroit. <laughs> which is funny because it was Detroit last year. So, yes. Um, it's a step uh, up. I, it's a step up. I don't know. What's what's next? Akron? Like, what What <laughs> other rust belts Pittsburgh? I believe that's it. I believe that you're you just – it, it. we're just going to do Detroit, S- S- Cleveland, Pittsburgh, maybe Wheeling, West Virginia, get a little bit of coal dust on everybody's lungs. Sure. Like, yeah, because when I because because when I think of summer, I think Cleveland. You're like Cleveland, Ohio. I think Cleveland. I think I think the beautiful beaches of Lake Erie. Isn't that That's where like, they did? Uh, what did beach? Not bash at the beach, but when yes, AEW did. Yes, they they did in the middle of the January or whatever it was. The middle so, of yeah. January in Cleveland, they were like yes. beach break. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this horrible um, manipulative backstage Ridge Holland segment right before we talk about his match. Um, so we'll, we'll move that down. So we're getting Oba versus Dijak, which is um, this this is I I I I hope we don't get it too soon. I will say that. The problem with that is that it's standard deliver season, so we're probably getting it then i just feel like there are there are there are a, if this was like battleground in may perfect like some a little bit more under obafemi's belt before he comes up against a serious a, a serious challenge to his championship but you you dijak versus obafemi is a dream match for me now like i cannot wait to see how that is put together like those they're going to be amazing together um, but Dijak basically is like, I'm I'm not sold on you yet. I'm not buying it. We'll see what happens. And Oba being like, but he well, he say like um um Brooks Jensen has wandered into my jungle and he will be slaughtered. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? Let's just see it. Let's see what happens. Um I um Brooks confronted him in the parking lot, and Briggs tried to come between them. And uh sorry, double vest and beach. Thank you. Uh, uh, although you know what happens, eventually I just stopped saying the f- the funny name because they start to be good enough that it's true. I don't need to say it anymore. And on it, it's graduation day. It's becoming close to that point for 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 both of these gentlemen. The but tough I- part with them is that the nickname is so good that it's hard to let go of it. Yeah, like it's it's such a good one, and it's been with us so long that. Yeah. It's it's the hardest one to say goodbye to for me, because mm-hmm. it's because it's double vest mm-hmm. and the beach. Like right. I loved Caucasians of Pain. Don't get me wrong, right. but like to say goodbye to double vest and the beach. Right, right. Is that's a tough one. That's a tough one to let go it to. Is. But we are we um, are getting dangerously close to that point. Um, when he, when in the in the in the thing he says, "You watch what I do to your boy tonight." And I was like, oh, that's just that is that is so like 80s that's martial so arts movie. Oba, too. Like it's just but so it's, it's so Oba. It's so Oba, but it is such a line from like an uh, like an 80s martial arts movie. Yes. You know what I mean? Like this guy's this guy's asking for trouble, and I'm all too happy to give it to him. I under I know you're the bigger threat than he is, but he's called. For for Me execution yeah. first, watch what happens to do to him before you decide you want a piece of me. Watch what I do to your boy. That is that is some badass final boss shit. Like that's awesome. So the the match happens, and here's the thing about the match that everyone was like thought I'd be really pissed that the match wasn't over in forty five seconds. And the thing about Obafemi is he can squash guys all day. I don't care who it is. It's obvious that he's really, really good at that, right? When he gets to the main roster on his route to being a five-time world champion, to being a three-time WrestleMania main eventer, if not more, he's going to have to learn how to wrestle this style. Yes. You know what I mean? The, a longer match, hope spots for the challenger. You know what I mean? Like, he's got to learn how to wrestle that. This was, I think... The first 
NXT match where I did t- not take my eyes off the picture in picture because I wanted yeah. to see Oba wrestle because from the beginning, this is what I got from this match. Oba Femi is wrestling Brooks Jensen like you play wrestle with your little cousins when you're 15. You know what I mean? Like the, the your little cousins who watch wrestling and want to do like elbow drops and stuff, and they want to wrestle with you. You're in, you know, you're in no danger of um of being hurt by them. They can't actually do anything to you. So you're just playing with them. And and that's what it was. Like, put me in a headlock. This is fun. Isn't this fun? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push you off. Oh, you're gonna lock me up again. Okay. Okay, good. Good for you. Like <laughs> that that is what this match was, at least the beginning of it. Was Obafemi just allowing Brooks to tangle with him for a while. We're going to tussle. It'll be fun. And and then there be during the picture in picture, like Brooks would like grab at his leg when he's laying down. He'd just swat away his hand. And the disdain, his body language is unbelievable. Is, is amazing to me in the ring. The way he carries himself, but also the little things, the, his gestures, all of it in the ring. It belies how ridiculously early in his career this guy is. Like, it also, I don't know if this guy has a, like took like an acting elective at the University of Alabama or something. But like, there was a point where he got he hit a he got clotheslined. And lay down and immediately turn back around up. And they looked over at Beach and smiled. And there was this moment of like, you got me. That was good. I felt that one. Game on. And from that point, he wasn't playing around anymore. There was a, this was a story, like a main main event of a pay-per-view level story in a throwaway match in the middle of an episode of NXT because of what Obafemi was doing with all, and, and to his credit, very Brooks good Jensen. stuff from Brooks Jensen today. Not the beach. Brooks De- Jensen playing the role of this guy who is a big dude. He's Bull Buchanan's boy. Correct. He's a big dude. And he was being hucked around that ring by Obafemi. Like there was a moment where he rolled to the outside and on the way his eyes were so wide. Yes, I know exactly what shattered. moment you're talking about. Like he is, he was doing a great job putting this over. Like it, this was a really, really well laid out match. At no point, at never was Obafemi in danger, even when Beach was getting offense on him. And Oba knew it. And that's when, when, when Briggs, when Double Vest comes down to watch things and try and pump up, like, oh, good, you're here. Now I will show you. It was almost like he was waiting for Briggs to show up to, to give him a front row seat to what he is capable of. Because at that point it was literally just toss backdrops, like just throwing them across the ring. Power bomb. I could pin him now, but I'm not gonna power bomb. Like it was, and he was doing it with a smile on his face, barely breaking a sweat. They have set up the, final boss like this is really really great stuff to the point where they've teased a match between the mad dragon and obafemi and that when that happens i assume will be like SummerSlam ish time around there if that were to happen like that is that is the absolute clash of the titans a man who cannot be hurt against a man who will turn you to dust like, I'm so into whatever this is, man. The thing you, I agree wholeheartedly with pretty much ever, everything you said. Um, the the only things that I will add, and it's really just another dimension of what you were saying, is his grasp of authority of who he is in the ring Yes, is unreal for how short of a time he's been doing this. Because you, oh, man, I don't know how to describe it and i wish i could i wish there was a better way for me to quantify it with words but you can just see wrestlers instincts sometimes come alive and we know it when we see it and nxt often mocks it which which annoys me 
Like it, that's one of the things that annoys me about NXT is when you get someone who's really great at those things, it's either booked to make those things look silly mm -hmm. or, or to discount them. And that that's frustrating to me as a fan because bad booking is bad booking, poor tournament seating, whatever we complain about on here. Right. But when you have wrestlers that are actively doing things that feel like, well, no, this is how someone in this world would act realistically and they mm -hmm. undercut that that's when it gets like legitimately frustrating for me um because i'm like no that guy's right <laughs> uh oh but Femi, all the facial expressions in this match all the body language and to your point our dear beach who's growing up right in front of us here mm -hmm. looking incredible in this um a lot of his pacing in this really blew my mm -hmm. mind because it was he got his ass kicked for a lot of this match. He did. But it it wasn't, oh my God, and rolled out of the ring. And like, it, it wasn't so David and Goliath because of his size, but he had these really great moments of, okay, that didn't work. How do I re-strategize against this mm -hmm. guy? Mm -hmm. And you saw, you saw it on his face. You could read it. You really could. And it was so nice to see because it was just like, it was almost like he was measuring his own gas tank against how much, can I re-strategize against this guy that I have no idea how to take down was really good and credit to them. They normally make really bad booking decisions, but even when his buddy came in, it was not an interference spot. It was a, let me get you hyped up spot and it didn't play mm -hmm. into the match. I like that kind of stuff. That is storytelling layers. Yeah. That yes. is not, that is not interference garbage. So this was like the shining star of the episode between this and the Tony D stuff, like really, really great. And I think, for your mental health in mind, we should stop reviewing the episode right there and play video yep. games. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, my thoughts are I would love to, but they wouldn't. They won't. We won't. Oh yeah, we got to um, review the show. I guess. Yeah. Don't let us. Shabugan says so. Obafemi is Bolo Young in this example. Yes, Bolo Young uh, from from uh, from Bloodsport. That's all, that's what I want my final boss to be in every in every wrestling company. I want that guy to be the dude who's like. I will, I will, I will murder you in the ring, and I will yeah. do it to your friend in front of your face. I, I, I will just, put I you that. in the ground and smile. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> one of those. I um, have a grown. That is one of the coldest lines ever. God bless any case. Yeah, I have yeah. a grown ass man, and I will put you in the ground mm -hmm. and smile. Almost I mean, as good. It's better than, but like very close behind it is. Send anyone you want to take my title. Just don't send anyone you want back. You want back. Oh, so delicious. Yeah, it's so good. Um, so, uh, Ariana Vente versus the Jeej. Um, and Gigi Dolan has to, f has to f fight. A, now a, why you got to call Luis out like that by accident? <laughs> he's, that's what he put in there. He wrote it there. He wrote it the Jeej. Oh, a little, a little behind the curtain for you here at Fightful. I was setting up the broadcast for, for this very show that we're doing, and I looked at Louise's rundowns, which are impeccable yeah. and always very well done, yeah. and instead yeah. of Gigi Dolan, he accidentally wrote gig. Yeah. G -G. <laughs> well, this, this, I was this, like, this is a funny little typo. And so then he renamed our document, where we keep track uh -huh. of everything, uh -huh. Gigi. Yeah. Right. So, so this, is also, this is also a joke from about a year and a half ago. Where we decided that if they did the mix max challenge again, you have to have Gigi Dolan and Brooks Jensen because so it would be Gigi, be Gigi, Gigi in the beach. beach. Yeah, Gigi it's perfect. Beach. Writes itself G as a sitcom. Gigi the beach, right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Feeling creepy. Uh, hold on. What is it? There we go. Gigi beach, beach next. next. <laughs> um, Wait, what was it? Strong fish. That was when we had Roddy Strong yeah, about me. Fish. Strong, strong fish. fish next. That's right. So he said. Um, also, shout out to Vic Joseph, who on commentary just goes to Booker T. You're on one today. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we can yeah. talk about the show again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Meet Norma says I call him uh, Oba Meaty, not Oma Femi. He's because he's very meaty. Meet forever, partner. Yes. Meet forever. Um, you know. You know what? You know what else is a is a uh, um, now now a. Man, I'd love to see that thing. It's Oba versus Bronson Reed. Try doing, <laughs> yes. tr try doing that to me. That like that's 
that's a lot of fun when you have like the big dude and like okay i'm i'm can you do that to me too and the answer is yes because he can bench press 500 pounds and that's why it's so much fun that you know what that is that's you know what the next time they pull out the the ring breaks on a superplex it's obafemi superplexing bronson reed do that's that's one you Earned get it. for free Earned that's it. one you get for free on the main roster, Obafemi superplexing Bronson Reed and the ring breaks. Yep. That's it. Yes, please. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, the Jeej uh, loses to R.A. <laughs> on a venti. Um, it, the, the stipulation is if if she if she loses, she has to get a makeover from Ariana Venti. And um, why won't you let me help you? She says to uh, Gigi Dolan throughout the match. And she does a blatant, like, back kick, low blow, like an old um, Ric Flair. Like, he's got the, the ref's attention, so he just kicks his leg up behind him and gets the guy in the in the yam bags. Um, <laughs> next tonight? This uh, also got and... me for being Ric Flair. Tsunami. Yep, yeah, that's very good. Um, so, uh, Shibuga says, "Screw Bronson Reed, give me Jeff Cobb." I don't know, man. If 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 WWE is smart at all, they will throw crazy amounts of money at Obafemi for a long term deal, and just keep doing it, and just keep doing it because that dude wrestle that dude is their perfect big man heel, and he's already learning better. Like, I mean, if he wants to leave, fine. But I don't feel like Jeff Cobb's ever coming to WWE. And that feels like a, he feels like a, they'd be dumb to do anything but throw that crazy no, amount of money. No, but at also, like, Nigel McGinnis dot Jeff, I want to see it. So I get it. Okay, like, fine, sure. I want to see it. Right. <laughs> um, Luis, <laughs> Luis says, screw that counter. Give me all three. Like, as a triple threat. Touche. Um, anyway. Now that's me. Matt, this is why. Meat Madness needs yeah. to be a 64-person yeah. tournament mm -hmm. running yeah. from March until yeah. mid-April. Yeah. So. <clears throat> the low blow to a lady. Now, we just had Becky Lynch explain that she couldn't just kick uh, kick somebody in, in between the legs in a match that she's doing because her foot would get stuck. That is what she said to Kevin Owens. Uh, backstage um now it wasn't a foot it was like the the meat of the calf um but so the no stickage but however there's there was some confusion uh online uh as to whether or not that was even a thing nobody can recall ever seeing a low blow ending a women's match because after that uh because the ref didn't see that low blow from 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 Ariana Venti to the Jeej. So the Jeej did a full like one of these between the legs to um to Ariana Venti and the ref fully saw it, so he DQ'd the Jeej. So now the Jeej is gonna make over. Um and but and GG Dolan says, yes, for whatever for whatever whoever is asking, yes, it does hurt. So I suppose the floor would be yours, because I certainly Yeah, hurt. I think a different type of pain than if you have a yam bag mm -hmm. city right. situation, uh -huh. um, I would find that that would probably be something that's very effective as far as inflicting pain and hurting someone right. yeah. um, of, of the gal persuasion mm -hmm. for sure. I don't think it does the same type of damage probably that a, that a shot to the yam bag does, but I, right. I wouldn't say it, it'd be completely ineffective. There's right. probably more effective things that you could do in that like situation. There's a, there's a specificity to the low blow in a, in a male match, which is right. why that is a disqualification. It goes back to like low blows in boxing and stuff. And I've just never considered that if you did that in a, in a women's match, it would be the same kind of automatic disqualification. Yeah, it hurts, but a lot of places that you could punch somebody on a on a woman would hurt because it hurt. Can you disqualify? You just punch him in the boob because apparently that hurts. It would, you know? um, but I don't know. Maybe you should be an ally, Alex. It's twenty twenty four. Women can get to you for low blows too. Okay? okay, support women. Fine. 
You know what? And, and they deserve to be paid more than 70 cents on the dollar while they do it. <laughs> um, but uh, G- <laughs> G- No, G- let's Dolan, talk about them getting a makeover because we are 14 years old. Mm-hmm. So. They're, she has to get a makeover. She has to become a, a yeah. real lady now. Um, and uh, so Gigi Dolan um, tweeted said, at least I'll have this memory. Uh, This is what she's, this is not me. This is her words. At least I'll have this memory of the time I turned your roast beef into a smash burger. And then she posted this picture. (laughs) I'm going to read that one more time for anybody who missed it. (laughs) At least I'll have this memory of the time I turned your roast beef into a smash burger. And then posted this picture. That's, that one is never leaving the files of the Sour Graps Society. That this, is incredible. Show. We're using this forever. Thank you. This is unbelievable. She yeah. sold her ass off, this this Ariana. She sure <laughs> did. This is a, by the way... An atrocious storyline, complete waste of Gigi Zillan's talents. Um, we'll see whatever this comedy is mined from the uh, from the makeover session. But like, she, it, it really felt like they were setting up Gigi Dolan to skyrocket into a singles yeah. career after the breakup of Toxic Attraction, and this is what we got a year later. This it's is like what we the got separated here shoulder oh. or whatever, right? Wasn't it her? Was it her or JC that had the shoulder injury? JC that they got her. JC had the yeah. shoulder injury, but it was while yeah. she was feuding with Gigi. Right. It feels like ever since that got derailed, because she was giving those great baby face promos, and yeah. they had all the stuff with her brother, and I was like, she sounds really sincere, like she really yeah. fits here. Yeah. But this is why I go back to I love the amount of screen time, but not the booking, because like Gigi should feel like a threat. Blair Davenport should feel like a threat. JC Jane should probably feel like more of a threat than she does. Like, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. The Gia stuff brings brings back memories that you will never recall. But none of these people feel important around the title. It just feels like they're doing a bunch of kind of like sticky stuff on the side. But Ariana Grace is like for what they have laid out for her, it's not for me, but she's doing it well. Like she's yeah. she's succeeding in it. Um, mm-hmm. she's a riot in the ring, so yeah. Um, I've always wanted the person uh to who like a, a, a bit of a, of somebody like why won't you let me help you type of a thing, uh in it like in a it, while they're doing um a uh submission maneuver. I'm not sure I did. I want it out of Ariana Grace, but it, you know, I guess beggars can't be choosers. It's true. Um, hold on, I'm trying to get our new logo here um, uploaded. No, we have a new logo. All right. We have a new I run logo. a Manscaped ads from three years ago, and we got a new logo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're getting a new logo. Um, uh, this is it. Uh, hold on here. Da, da, da. Um, no, not that. I want one of these and then this. What's going on here? What's, what's, awesome if you're that? listening in audio form. Yeah, so, so good. So good. Best part of the show. Yeah, yeah it is. It's just the best. Is it, is it just beef? Be fill an air. Hey, da, you know da, what? Da, While da, you're da, doing da, that. Da, 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 da. Yep. I bet yeah. more people would be interested in watching us online than they would mm-hmm. listening to us in audio form, which we su- appreciate the support either way. Don't get me wrong. Right, right but, sure, sure. But if I'm placing bets, mm-hmm. well, darn it, there's only one place that I'm going to go, Alex. Hey right. guys, I'm here to tell you about Bet Online AG, the official betting partner of Fightful. Whenever you hear about odds for wrestling events, boxing events, MMA events, or really anything, it comes from betonline.ag. They have the earliest lines with odds open before the competition. You can bet big with high limits and rebet functionality. They have the fastest payouts with winnings paid in just minutes and the industry's best bonuses on every qualifying deposit. The biggest markets like NFL, NBA, NCAA, NHL, UFC, 
plus odds for things like WWE, AEW, and tons of other companies as well. They also have a bunch of popular games. They've been trusted for 25 plus years. As I mentioned, if we have odds here on Fightful, they are always coming from betonline.ag. Check it out, my friends. Bet what you can. Please bet responsibly. And with all your betting money, head over to FightfulSelect.com, would you? Subscribe over there. You're going to get a ton of WrestleMania coverage from me and Alex. I have to figure out my schedule for WrestleMania because I'm going to be in town. But mostly, um, I just really, I'm I'm very excited for all of the wrestling that's taking place that weekend. Mostly excited for for Nigel's magic show. So I'll see what I'm going to hop on for. But there will be plenty of Sourgrass post shows going on behind the paywall as there are for WrestleMania weekend mm-hmm. and every other pay-per-view that is WWE and AEW related. Um, so mm-hmm. please subscribe at FightfulSelect.com. You also get plenty of other bonus podcasts. Mm. The list goes on, which is now I think the hump goes on. Continue humping. I don't know. I don't know what our bosses do over there, but they're behind the paywall <laughs> continuing uh, as well as plenty of other uh, bonus podcast but why would you listen to literally anybody else but me and alex i mean my because you, you're purple lightning but it says it purple lightning. and it's great Read it on on black lieutenant, lieutenant colonel photo dropping dropping the logo i love it. it that should be a t-shirt we need to make that a t-shirt yeah you'll yeah. get 10 cents to the dollar mm-hmm. there we go it's very good <clears throat> Um, oh, but, uh, so Shabugan has given us uh, like four of these in a row. First, but the first one's about Oba. It says Oba versus Omas. Omas leaves town because obviously Omas is the loser. Uh, can't have both of them on the roster. Two Nigerian giants won't quite work. They're very um, different Nigerian giants. They're, they're different, but yeah, with, yeah, it's a little bit. Shabugan says, I speak for everyone who didn't see this match. What? In the area <laughs> Grace versus the Jeej. Um, Shabugan says, if the argument well is, well, it hurts, all things done in all matches to all genders are DQs now. This is bad. This is as bad as WCW counting someone out in a no DQ. It's, it is, it's just unprecedented. I'm not really sure. I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't hurt or that it doesn't hurt in a specific way that is more that different than other hurts, but it just is a thing I've never seen before. Uh, Shabugan says, uh, is Gigi is doling out food based low blows. Gigi doling, uh-huh. Uh-huh. doling, doling, doling. Nice, nice. Hey, should uh, we do some puns or do you want to keep going? Um, yeah, let's, let's do some puns. I mean, I'm not going to rate them all because we got a lot of them, but no, we'll just get on. started. That's get started into pun town. We're going to need some extra joy going down to the back half of this show that's all okay here we go let's see here. we got uh 44 34 34 we're starting out hot tama valley says techno tongue 2000 <laughs> well 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 nicely done enr in rigabani says tonight's puns are caressling related <laughs> kind of yes kind of jw jb pringle says cm smooch CM Smooch. Uh, Meet Norma says, Super Kiss Party. Yeah, good. Super Kiss Party. Um, Hi, Astrid and, in the chat. Pr- please bring an owl toyed snow. If you're going to start kissing. An owl toyed snow? Owl toyed. Yeah. I think uh, it's kind of like owl. Good evening, SGS. I love you all. We love you too. We love you too so much. Um, Louisville says XOXO Buffemi. <laughs> that one's the leader in the clubhouse right now. Uh-huh. Um, that one's so good. Tom, Le- Tom Valley says, Before you kiss, use Banaka Bel Air. <laughs> kiss of death, right? Well, I mean, so, yes, yeah, true, but also, remember Banaka? That was a thing, man. Yeah, I was is, just saying, is, like is that still around? I Banaka? don't think so. I don't that's know. That's so that's that's like an 80s sitcom joke is Banaka. Yeah. I don't know if people know. Um, uh, Greg Cherry Brand says uh not the wolf dogs, the wolf snogs. Hey oh, nicely done. 
And a little difference than Techno Tongue 2000. It's Pecno Team Ooh, 2000. Oh, very nice. Depends, little little depends on, on how you're feeling yeah. about Techno Team 2000. Mm -hmm. It must be. Steffa says uh, Tatum Pexley and Braun Breakaker. I got that snog in me. <laughs> Chris Pereira says X Pack. X Pack. X Pack is really good. I also just love X Pack. So. Mm -hmm. uh, insert Cleveland Clever Tegan Knox pun says uh, Tevin Knoxing instead of Tegan Necking. He he acknowledges it's a reach. It is a little bit, but you you put a creative it. restraint on yourself. So we'll I respect, take it. I respect it. Enr says tenderness team two thousand. That's very good. That's very sweet. Very different than the other. Is that three Techno Team 2000 plus? That we... I, I believe, I believe, I don't even think that's the last of them. Um, Ian Riccoboni, <laughs> oh uh, uh, so this has, has... They're so forgettable as a tech team. Yeah. Ian Riccoboni, well, they have a fantastic name. That's the thing about it. Is that... <laughs> no, I, I rarely even remember Chad Fortune's they, name. <laughs> listen, they just do things, honestly, the, the puns are all very good. The puns are amazing. But, well, that's the most doing entertaining thing about it. They're just doing it because, because they love you and they love oh. when you pop. Thank so. you. I, I love you guys and I appreciate it when you make me laugh so hard I fall off the screen. Ian Riccoboni is my favorite. Mustafa Sensuali. <laughs> oh! I like that one. That's very good. Sensuali. Um... <laughs> Insert clever Tegan Knox pun says Tegan snogs. Yes, I stole this. I feel no shame. <laughs> it's um, a good one. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bandana Head, I'm not, I'm just going to read what it says. Kiss puns, children of the nightmare collective. That's what Was it, that that's a nightmare collective thing? Because I don't remember I don't it. Know. I'm not really sure. Um, I don't remember that one. I don't remember. I don't remember none of the Nightmare Collective. Let's. By the way, that that goes back very early days of AEW. Um, C Delgado says Ace Freely Steel. <laughs> it's, it's the band. Well played. Um, uh, um, this was good from Chris Chris Pereira, The Junkyard Snog. That one's excellent. Very well done. Um, and. Uh, Meet Norma says, Smooch Robinson. That's really um, good. Uh, make out Ito. <laughs> and fear the retainer, not the revival. Fear the retainer. <laughs> FTR, Fair enough. fear the retainer. Um, uh, Shabugan says, Tony D'Angelo, kiss from a rose. This is awful. It's not your best, but we appreciate your support and your creative. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, you have to be boundless and unbridled right. with your creativity when you're coming up with yes. puns. That doesn't mean they're all going to be winners. No. Mm -hmm. uh, this is good. Um, the old, um, the, what they used to call Tyler Bate and Trent Seven and um, Pete Dunn. British right. snogs, British snog style. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, so, Lieutenant Colonel Photo says every kiss begins with kayfabe. Oh, that's sweet. Mr. Bandana Head says kiss by a Nyla Rose. <laughs> that's very good. Chris Pereira says Mako out. Like Mako Satamora? Ma yeah. Okay, I was trying to, I was like spelling it in my head and it didn't work. Ma Mako, Miko, Mako, Miko, Mako. Um, Pisa what about says, Sunny Kiss. Did anybody just send in Sunny Kiss? Nobody has sent in Sunny Kiss. No. Get it. Um, Pitas, yes, I did get it. Um, uh, Pisa says, Hickey Starks. <laughs> That's right. And then Chris Pereira <laughs> says, Hickey the Dragon Steamboat. <laughs> and I forgot about the time uh, a little while ago on Collision, we had Hickey on Hickey Violence. We did. We did. That yeah. was a, a bailout of a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, of an angle. Yes, it was. Uh, Chris Pereira says, smooch! Smooch, please! 
Uh, and Ian Rigabani says, um, Booker teasing. Booker T, Booker teasing. That's right. And then also says the Blackpool Cuddle Club. Oh. Um, <laughs> MD Cyclo says, chin up, tits out, and watch for the smooch. <laughs> Um, and then Cyclo says, also, for no particular reason, what's Sheila's favorite colors? What's Sheila's favorite colors? Mm-hmm. Um, probably like a nice magenta. I love a good magenta. And in combination with it, maybe a nice, like a, a nice teal to go along with it. You are all about your magentas. I love my magentas. If you just if you look in her closet, it's just magenta after magenta after magenta. You know what it is? Over. It's it's cross seasonal. You can the fall, you can, the winter, you can do a, the you spring. Zoom it all the Not just the most summery, but a nice bright magenta during the summer. If I haven't had a magenta bathing suit for the past thirty years, so also, summer. if I may say. It looks great on you. It's a fit. I can't oh, do a magenta. Thank you. I can't do a magenta. It doesn't no. work with my complexion, but it looks great on you. Oh, thank so. you so much. Um, Meet Norma says, Sunny Kiss, My Grits. That's very good. Adam Copulation. <laughs> and and Smoochasaurus. Smoochasaurus is really good. Oh, I'm going to use that just like in life. Matt Gray Sky says Cuddle House Hobbs. <laughs> Cuddle House. Uh, Jeremy Pringle says Chris Splash, which is just a reference to Two Dimes. Um, oh, rest in peace. <laughs> um, somebody on somebody on the on the chat earlier said Rest in Beach. <laughs> oh, very funny because it's, it's um, graduation day. Yeah, it is. Um, Ian R says, Chase, I wish I knew how to quit you. Oh. Mm -hmm. To the Trick Mayhem says, Paul Stanley Hansen, rock and roll up all night. <laughs> that party right. every day. Um, every day. Pieces says, Tomatunga. <laughs> Very nice. Um, and, uh, and Louisville says, Tonsil Hockey Talk Man. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's really funny. Um, let Electric Mayhem says a figure four lip lock. A figure four lip lock. Oh, and Claudio Canoodaloli. Who? Well, Canoodaloli. Yeah. Um, uh, Jesse Ozog says a steel freely getting the f out of here. <laughs> Very nice. And Matt Gray Sky says kiss Jericho. I Sorry, mean, Alex. I mean, it rhymes. It's fine. Rhymes. And also, like, that dude loves the band Kiss. So. He does. He really does. He really does. Um, backstage, Sol Ruka and Carmen Petrovich are just hanging out, you know, like you do, talking about Blair, how everybody wants to be like Blair now. You I know, mean, who mean doesn't? And being like mean and whatever. And then Lola That's Vice just walks everyone up. Everyone backstage. <laughs> and Lola Vice is like, I'm like, hey, Lola Vice. Remember you? Do you remember you? Because I don't remember you. What were what are you, what have you been doing all this time? Apparently, she's been she's been on Level Up, and a, I guess according to this thing that Luis has read is written, he says Lola is a heel again. When did she ever turn face? Has she been wrestling face on Level Up? Because I don't remember her ever. Yeah, being she's been heels the whole time, right? At least yeah. in in know. my purview. And then Brinley shows up. And she uh, does her Thea Hale's older sister impersonation. Uh, and they, then Malik Blade and Idris of NFA have to show up and, and carry her away because she's crazy. But she is a Sol Ruka mark. And she has a match next week against Sol Ruka. And she's so excited about it. I feel like she feels like how we all did when we found out Sol Ruka was coming back. We're very excited that she's here. Um, Luis, Luis says that she turned face against Electra. No, she didn't. She She... She turned. She turned on her heel co-partner. That's very different than turning face. Yeah, like, and she was a, a heel in the match with 
with Lyra and stuff too. So yeah, she lost the at a glance, and then she disappeared. I did lose the at a glance. Yeah. Sorry, Luis. I know Alex has been no selling a lot of things today, but that's he's right on that one. Um, Kalani, Kalani Jordan apparently got injured backstage, so she can't be Thea Hale's partner. Thea Hale's like very upset about this. Did you do this? She she screams cocainally as she runs down to the ring. Did you do this? You did this, didn't you? To 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 Kiana James and Izzy Dame. And like, oh, I guess I'll have to face you by myself. But here is uh, Fallon Henley who shows up That's wearing that. matching wearing matching gear to Kiana James for some reason. Like, they brought up how they used to be tag team partners together. And I guess that they still own the gear that they had made when they were supposed to be friends and tag team partners and just so happened to be wearing it separately on the same night because that is gear they made to be matching gear when they were a tag team partner, but they haven't been such for over a year, and it's just weird. It is a little weird, but I guess they just carry that gear everywhere they go. So God bless them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, JC Jane and uh, Jasmine Nix with seven Ys and four Xs shows up, and a Z. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> That's that's accurate. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I think it's just like why square eyes normally are. Yeah, I'm and pretty one sure. Extra. I'm pretty sure there are there are at least seven Y's and four X's and one Z. Yeah, one Z. <laughs> um. So anyway, they they're just standing there. And then uh, at one point, J.C. Jane pulls Fallon Hanley out of the way of a big boot of Izzy Dame on the outside so that Izzy Dame hits the big boot on Thea Hale and then rolls her into the ring so that Kiana James can uh, hit her finisher uh, and then um, pin her. And so um, so Kiana James and, and Izzy Dame have won and are moving on now and uh, then Fallon just gets in the ring and Thea Hale gets a mic and Fallon Henley just kind of like wanders over to a corner so that Thea Hale can talk to the hard cam with her microphone and awkwardly kind of turn this way because JC Jane and Jasmine Nix are behind her four or five steps and to the right. So she feels like she has to plant her feet and point her toes at the hard cam while giving a promo to people who are behind her and to her right. So she ends up like doing a lot of this while her toes are pointed directly at the hard cam. And again, what kind of direction are you giving these poor people who don't like this is that's it was really awkward. Just stand on the other side of the ring and talk to, to, to JC and Jasmine. You know what I mean? She's she's given this 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 long promo about how she, she like i thought you were everything i ever wanted to be it was a very cringe inducing promo that they wrote for thea hale that to her credit she tried to deliver in a way that did that didn't make me actively like shrink into my chair i was so embarrassed for her second hand the character the way that they not not thea hale she was trying so hard but the character having to outpour all of this to all as though the the hard cam was her therapist it was it was just so weird your face looks like the like when you were little, you would do bus driver, bus driver, please open the door. This is this is what I was doing while <laughs> watching the promo. I was like, no, don't do it. Uh, the match was pretty good. Kiana's really good. I would like for them to get just stop with her bag. <laughs> just let's just stop with the bag and just let her be. It's starting to feel like she has a weird attachment disorder to the bag, uh, rather than like. Look at the bag of tricks that I carried to the ring. Um, I feel like she's gonna have a picnic. It does not feel like just be menacing. Someone in the chat just said it. She's like she's got a great spine buster. Like just yeah. let her use her moves. Um, Izzy's fine. Uh, 
Yeah, the Thea Hale. I give them credit for interweaving their stories a little bit here with like other people on the roster that it doesn't feel like this angle is isolated and functioning here. And then this angle is isolated and functioning here. Like they're at least kind of pulling people in and out appropriately. Um, Stop hanging out backstage. Psycho Um, has a really good point. This does feel like a high school musical type movie when the main character nerdy girl finally stands up to the bully who she thought was teaching her everything in like in good faith, but was actually making fun of her behind her back. And this is the moment. Yes. It just it, didn't feel right. It the, the staging of it was very weird. It was very yeah. weird. Um, but I like the the inflections of Thea Hale more the other promo that we saw today. Mm-hmm. That we've gotten to see the sincere side of her has been really good. It's right. added some dimension and it's made her feel different. And like her character is actually evolving. Yeah. Um, I guess we're going to get JC and Thea in a blow off match at Steam and Deliver on the pre show, probably, or something. I don't know. That's weird. It feels like a very long running angle to not do at the pay per view. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But it also doesn't feel like. She says, like, I'm, I'm, I'm the old Thea Hale is back, and I don't care if you think I'm a loser. And then she gets all coked out. And she runs around in a circle, and JC Jane and Izzy Dame, not Izzy Dame, sorry, uh, Jasmine Nix with seven Ys, four Xs, and a Z. They like back out of the ring slowly. And I, and it was like, isn't this where you punch her? Isn't that, isn't that what wrestling is? Like she, she was like, she like, I don't need you anymore. It's like, oh, yes, you do, pal. And we're, we, then we're going to get like Thea and we're going to get Jasmine Nix with seven Ys and four Xs and a Z mm-hmm. in her in her debut in this tag match with Fallon Henley and Thea Hale versus, that's going to be how we're going to do that. And then eventually after that, you do get your blow off JC Jane and, and Thea Hale. But you got to do that tag match first, right? Probably the tag match. It does feel like, wouldn't it be neat if there were tag belts around? <laughs> like, it would be nice. They have it's such a possible, robust though. women's roster. It's um, not possible. But... But this this leads directly to um, backstage where um, Riley uh, challenges the um, catch point boys, the catch boys, the what do we, no quarters? Catch boys. <laughs> uh, the no quarter catch club. There you go. Two dime, not two dimes, no quarters. Two um, uh, and a nickel. So uh, 30 cents. So um, there, there's, they're just, um, They've just they because anybody can fight in this thing. Also, anybody can fight in the tournament, and they're also two of them. To any two of them, probably let's be honest, it's probably going to be what's his face. Miles Rosborn will finally actually have a match against each other. No, actually, no. He's he's in the Carriage Cup match, and then uh, Nathan Frazier and Axiom are going to be in the match versus Milesy the mother Miles Rosborn, and then. Um, Gable Stevenson's brother, whatever the heck his name is. Um, and maybe we'll get Gulak versus Riley, Riley Milesborn, whatever his name is. Damon Kemp. It's very confusing. Kemp. It's very confusing. There, Damon Kemp, thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, Shabugan says, this description makes me think that Thea is totally going to make fe- Fetch happen. Stop trying to make Fetch happen, Thea. She might. It's not she going might. to happen. She might. Apparently, Dempsey is from Atlanta, and this really weirds out Luis, and he is not wrong about it being weird. It's very, it's very, very it is kind of weird. Um, yeah, it's the uh, it's the inverse of Timothy Thatcher, who's from Sacramento, but of course he's not. He's from England. <laughs> um, he is still from England, and if he's mm-hmm. not from England, he's right. from Maine. And if he's not from Maine, he's from outer space. There's no way that guy's from Sacramento. Ridge Holland is in a darkened gym, uh, pushing a sled with weights on it back and forth across a floor. And he just how happens to be standing next to his phone when he gets a FaceTime from his darling little girl and and her mother wishing him good night. You be you be safe tonight in your match. Uh, I, you know the, you you know, like don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Good night, Daddy loves you. Okay, night night, sweetheart. And then uh, and he like this is so manipulative. They're like oh, just so you know, he's a father of a very very cute little girl who loves her daddy very much. So don't you care about whether or not 
Ridge Holland gives in to his inner demons and tries to murder Sean Spears tonight. Don't you care whether or not that little girl's father is a murderer? Don't you care? And the answer is, sadly, no. That's the problem with this whole thing. Is There's a line from the movie you'll never be able to watch from Dust Till Dawn where um, <laughs> uh, um, George Clooney says to the family he's taken hostage. He says, I don't give a shit about you either way. You could all live forever or die right this fucking minute. I don't care. That's the thing about Ridge Holland. I don't care what you do with him. I'm never going to be emotionally invested in Ridge Holland. Like, this has nothing even to do with the big E thing. Like, that's a hard, like, thing to get over, honestly, for me. But even absent that, like, I don't, he doesn't draw me in. So the idea that I'm supposed to care whether or not Sean Spears gets this guy to try to murder him with a chair. I just don't. And the the difference between Bray Wyatt trying to do this exact thing with John Cena is that John Cena had years and years of building him up as the absolute guy who would not do that. He would not, who would not lose it and try to actually actively be that dude. And the, and Bray Wyatt trying to prove a point by doing it with John Cena mean something if he was just trying to do it with some random mid carter nobody would care and that's the problem you have with rich holland and sean, i think sean spears is doing really good work but you picked the wrong guy for him to do this with and to me i don't think the actual storyline works because of that i think the match was really well wrestled i do and I think all the story beats of him trying to get Ridge Holland to do all of these things, give into his demons, go to that dark, violent place, they all were well told and well acted. The problem is, I don't give a shit about Ridge Holland. I... <clears throat> I'm not, like, out on Ridge Holland, but I'm not in either. And the problem for me That's is... It's more that I don't think I have the same it's a no for me that you do. I have a problem with the I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. They took a real life experience and then they put it with something that feels inauthentic. And so now you've made something that feels like real life kind of feel inauthentic. Like I didn't mind the sit down interview. And I didn't fully bind what we got back here tonight, but it was very weird that a camera would be filming somebody saying goodnight to their wife and kid. But that's the type of bullshit we always get on NXT, right? Like, I've, I've accepted that. Um, I thought this was one of the better matches, and I am intrigued by the Sean Spears angle. I like angles like this, where a guy is trying to kind of bring something out of an opponent that is an inherent personal trait. Like, that, to me, is something that's kind of cool. Um, but it's not... It's not even just like the fact that it started with the Big E stuff and it's not the segments that followed. It's the combination of those things where I feel like there hasn't been a jump from the jump from real life happenings to kayfabe hasn't felt like the kayfabe has pulled on the sincerity of the real life stuff enough. And that might be because I was just so immediately like, don't do this. Like I, I immediately put up a wall. So like, them trying to pull that out of it i was just like no like i don't want i don't want mm -hmm. that i don't want that for him like i don't no. want that for ridge holland um i don't like that with any injury angles i don't like when danielson does it that's just mm -hmm. that's just a me thing um yeah. but i i thought the match was good and i like the idea but it just the execution hasn't been there for me yet mm -hmm. um i don't have the same go away heat as you do about it but uh i mean it's not, I even go, it's, it's, I mean, it's not even go away heat it's just that i like this it's not heat it's just there yeah it's just a thing you're doing and i'm not i i honestly if 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 the if the end of this feud is ridge holland doesn't do it because at the end of the at the end of the match Sean, he won't do it. Sean Spears takes advantage of that, hits his C4 little Death Valley driver onto a chair and uh, and wins that way. Because the chair is, is where the ref placed it. So the ref was a dummy because he didn't put it out of the ring. So then he hits, it, hits the thing on the chair so the ref can't disqualify him. And so that's how Sean Spears wins the match. 
if the end of the feud is Ridge Holland, like realize like what does what he needs to do to stop the anger within him and proves his point and beats Sean Spears the right way. I don't care if Ridge Holland gives into all of his anger and beats the hell out of Sean Spears. And Sean Spears is like, yeah, I, I won. I proved you are what everyone says you are. I don't care. Just do, do what you're going to do and be done with it. I want to see Sean Spears wrestle, work with a different guy because I'm really interested in what he's doing with this this with the chairman role in this setting. I just don't feel like this works with Rich Holland. You're you're digging yourself out of too deep a hole with a lot of people like Shabugan who says, "I'm sorry, but Rich Holland will only ever be the guy who injured Big E and like 30 other dudes." It's a bit high, but it's like 15. He knows to go away and get a new name and a gimmick. You know, like. Well, this is. <sighs> You're, this you're is starting, where I, I you're get starting s- you're starting from a really bad point with a lot of people and it's really hard to dig yourself out of that. I know and I I feel I have a hard time with it because I I overwhelmingly prefer when people use real human things that happened as character traits. I think it was because they did it to Ilya and because Biggie's not back. That has been tough. But you know what's not tough? What's not tough? when Corey Brennan gets scoops for us and he had some mm-hmm. post-show notes that he sent my way, he was like, do you want me to come on or type them up? And I was like, why don't you type them up? Cause we're actually behind on time in the show. And then I was like, you know what? That's silly. And he was like, Kate, it's 4 a.m. my time. I'm just going to send them to you. So here are some notes that he sent our way. He didn't really say he, that. But... He also said, he also wrote in the chat. I'm not invited on this week. Cause I'm a coward. Apparently. <laughs> he is a coward. I was trying to keep it professional. I keep my disputes backstage, except for when Alex no sells my great NXT team jokes. But uh, CM Punk was backstage at tonight's show, but kept a much lower profile than previous visits. Uh, many within NXT were not aware of his presence until photos began making the rounds. So there you go. Joaquin Wild was originally supposed to get much more distance on his dive, leaving OCM to recover to catch him in time. Uh, but Joaquin continues to draw praise for his willingness to partake in such large acts. We kind of talked to about that before. Um, Oba Femi continues to get a large amount of praise backstage and here. That wasn't in the notes, but I just thought I would make that note. Uh, with one source noting that several see him as a future WWE champion. Yeah, if you got yeah. eyes, you can tell. It's ridiculous. Nobody, nobody who has eyes could see it could say different. <laughs> the backstage reaction to the show was largely positive, with one source noting that everyone was happy this episode. Well, if we're not here to make that sour, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tatum Paxley popped out of a hidden compartment (laughs) during NXT to rush Roxanne Perez. She was in a hidden compartment. She was in a hidden compartment, probably (laughs) a road case. Probably a road case. Uh, Paxley entered the hidden compartment underneath the stands for the segment. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Carmelo Hayes was not at Tuesday's tapings. Uh, The recent influx of pre-taped vignettes is expected to continue throughout the roster as NXT officials have been happy with the responses to the segments. They've been great. Like all Mm -hmm. that Tony D stuff was aces tonight. More Mm -hmm. of that, please. Uh, Ariana Grace and Gigi Dolan's low blow spot was one that caught many off guard, but both women were credited to selling the rare finish, (laughs) Corey said. Rare, rare. Extremely rare. much Much like the roast beef, rare. That's right. That's right. Just like the um, roast beef smash burger that we got. Yep. Uh, Richard Bogan says also any story in implies that his anger leads to injuries can go away forever because it implies that Big E's injury was in some way purposeful. That ish can go away. Yes. It's a really complicated storyline. They probably shouldn't be telling with this particular guy. Yeah, that's a very fair point. That's a very fair point. Um, I did like this too. So it's like the Joker trying to get Batman to give in to his thing and just kill me. Kill me already. You know you want to, to prove a point. So if John Cena is Batman, is that why we can't see him? Because you can't ever see Batman. That would make sense. That's pretty respect. Good. Um, okay, no respect Corey? for this last... Okay, Corey, you're invited on to all future shows because I ain't reading your scoops in an Irish accent. <laughs> I could try, but it has to be one of two accents. Seamus or Finn Balor? I don't That's have it. An, I don't have another one. So That's um, it. you can go to Scotland. It's not far, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, yeah. Um, so Trick Williams comes out 
and tell gets a gets a promo and like you know he reiterates a lot of stuff we already know because we've been watching this we've been watching the show since the beginning so we understand yes you did a lot of things to back up Carmelo and when it was his time to back you up he didn't want to and yeah he's the one who attacked you we all get that and uh and he ruined everything for you um again when you had the title match and so now you want to beat up Carmelo Hayes all these things well delivered promo but just reiterating a whole bunch of stuff we already didn't made. say anything right then and when Corey's scoop about who interrupted Trick Williams promo came across my thing it did not list this as the end of the show I thought maybe they do this to kick off the show and then they do like okay we're gonna get a match between Noam Dar and and Trick Williams, which doesn't make a lot of sense anyway to me, because the last time we saw Noam Dar, it did feel like they were turning a corner and maybe almost baby facing him a little bit, uh, because of the way he lost the title to uh, the, yeah, the way that Cup match was. Agent was yeah, it was very it was much very like facey. very facey the way he that he lost the title the, the the cup to Charlie Dempsey. So they have him like, come out and interrupt and like trick me. What are you doing? No, you look at me. I'm I'm wearing shorts and a fur coat. I'm crazy. I'm Noam Dar. And and he says that nobody really cares about you thing. They care about me. And also, why are you whining and crying? Like, look what happened to me. I lost my lost heritage cup and I'm not whining about it on TV. So he gets in the ring and he's like, How about me and you in a match next week? And then oh, but I said, I see the way you're all looking at me like I'm this whatever I know by the way Lash Legend is looking at me that that she sees wh what I got or whatever and they get in the ring and um and he lays out Noam Dar and he lays out Oramensa and then he turns around to Lash like throwing a punch which he catches and then she she gets the heart all a flutter and then he pulls her in to Kamal's dip her, and then they just do a full on make out. Like, I apparently Trick Williams and Last Legend are a shoot couple. Oh, that's cute. Yes. Okay. okay. So, oh, here's the thing. Now you're into it, aren't you? Now you're into it. No, I can I see it on like, your face. No. Now you're into it. No, because I don't like on screen couples like, oh, you're dating in real life. That has to play out. It was just the initial reaction to finding out that they're for reals dating. That's cute. I ship it. Imagine being in a stable with Noam Dar and not being immediately in love with him, though. This is where I have a problem. Trick is an attractive fella. Charisma for days. Great style. Yes. But, like, yes. imagine being in, in a stable with Noam Dar and not being, like, immediately in love. This came out of literally nowhere. I do not recall Noam Dar and Trick Williams saying one word to each other in the entirety of them both being on the show, which is now over a year. What are we doing? That this that this, if 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 what we're doing is to set up now, Trick has a valet who is his real life girlfriend. Like Lash Legend breaks off with a metaphor, which leaves an open spot for you. That's why you like this. That's why you like this. If Lash Legend breaks away from the metaphor and goes with Trick, then there's an opening. Because it can't be the meta three. That's not a pun. So you have to slide in there. Obviously, no Amdar is going to pick you. Why wouldn't he? But like, come on. <laughs> and I love so the ending of the says, show. Look. Look at look at me. I'm wearing shorts. I'm crazy. No, it's not. Look at me. I'm wearing shorts. It's where I'm wearing shorts and a fur coat. I'm crazy. Those are the. Yes. Those are better. And Sefa says, Kate, this might be your way into the metaphor. Alex, if this is my way into the metaphor, I love everything about the ending of the show. Yeah. Because also, like, I'll join the metaphor, and then romance will be on their minds. Because Lash just left for trip, and Noam will be like. Oh my gosh, does this new girl have something I've always been looking for? Mm -hmm. I'll be like, yes, no, I'm Dar. Let's get married in the most fashionable place of all time and we'll run away together. But we won't be the meta two. We're gonna commit to the bit. <laughs> I don't I don't have the energy to this makes no sense at all. If, there have been if, no if, interactions with whole... Noam Dar and Trick. This the whole point of this to... is to like is to have Lash and Trick together now. I just don't 
because they're because they're a real life couple. I feel like there's more artful ways of doing it than this. So like they they have they they kiss, then they break apart, and Lash gets out of the ring, and Noam looks at her like, "What the hell are you doing?" And I also agree with him. What <laughs> like I don't know what like I don't know. Well, also. Trick is going over Mello and Mello is going to the main roster. Yeah, that's what we think is happening at Stand and Deliver. Well, I thought he why was going would to do a, I thought he was going to do a loser leaves NXT. This place ain't big enough for the both of us. So it's gonna so I I thought he was gonna challenge him to a specific thing. They maybe they may still do that, but sure, I would like it to weeks. be like here's a stipulation. The loser is out, and then you have him beat Carmelo and he goes to the main roster. I'm just saying, wouldn't it make more sense? If Lash was like, hey, that guy is hot and a winner, and Noam Dar just keeps losing. Sure. I'm going to go join right. that guy who just won at the biggest right. pay-per-view that we have against the biggest star that they have. Right. Like, shouldn't right. that catch her eye? I mean, yeah. I suppose. Just my thoughts. Um, I my, would never do that to Noam Dar. No, my would. also, yeah, my, my thoughts also are... Uh, if Lash Legend ends up costing Ilya Dragunov the, the NXT title, you're going to you're going to hate all of this again. Oh yes. Okay, good, good. Yes. So I, to, I just needed to make sure we were all on the same page about that particular thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I also want to see the other thing is, and I know it's completely different, mm -hmm. but it was like Lash had some matches. Otis was weird to her. She has a, a couple a, more matches, and now Trick is like seducing her. Like she is a powerhouse woman. Can we give her some like agency over herself? Of like, yes, I'm attracted to that guy, and yes, I'm dating real life. But like, mm -hmm. can she have a character outside of that, please? Other than mm -hmm. being the object of people's affections, like, give her some wins. Let her be a badass. She was wrestling consistently for a little bit, and then she wasn't. Yeah. Come mm -hmm. on now. Yeah. Um, all right, here we go. Just because night, Luis, Luis sent us this. Noam's reaction to this <laughs> maybe makes it all worthwhile. I mean, maybe not, but also maybe yes. I love him so much. <laughs> That's the what he say of me for me is what that just was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love him. I love Dora so much. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So uh, let's let's do. Yeah. Shibuka says Trick versus Carmelo. Omos leaves town. <laughs> I feel like that'd be a weird one to that put put so that mean to Omos. I mean, it's, it's I, I'm just reading what Shibugan sent. Uh, he also sent TMDK. The Mighty Don't Kiss. Oh. And then he also says or win titles. So that's unfortunate. Well, maybe. Shane Haste would win in the New Japan Cup if they put mm -hmm. him in the New Japan Cup because he beat freaking Naito, who currently yeah. holds the championship. Mikey well, Nichols is in there. Zack Sabre mm -hmm. Jr. is in there. Why isn't the guy who beat Naito in the G1 in there? I don't know, because he's also Slapjack, and they, they remember that. No, they um, that, man, that man DB yeah. says v that veneer is coming for kissing. Veneer. <laughs> oh, very nice. I've, so we're it's been a while since we saw veneer. Uh, Silver Apocalypse says, William Snuggle. All is fair in love and war games. Um, and then Lieutenant Colonel Photo says, Spindy Hartwell, the bottle. Spindy the bottle, Hartwell. Spindy the, the bottle. Spindy. Ooh. Um, okay. Uh, Tom Valley says, Here's the dominant WWE superstar, the Linder, the, uh, the underscore Linder. Uh, the freaking goat in WWE yeah. 2K. Mm -hmm. Undefeated. Undefeated. Up in Kamagoya. Look at this moveset. It's strong style in the game. It, it is very strong style. Yeah, it's a lot of Kamagoya. It's a lot of Kamagoya. <laughs> so much Kamagoya. Uh, Lupongi Vice. Um, uh, Best says, handle. Uh, Lupongi Vice says, I'm just here for Kate and her hair. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Thank you so um, much. The uh, Meet Norma says, Kate, have you sued Denise for gimmick infringement? She looks great, but the bangs seem familiar. Um, then... No, but I will say, I'm pretty sure when I was on Denise's channel, 
She mm. said she didn't like getting bangs because she felt like it made her look like Dora the Explorer. She looks no, beautiful no. with bangs. Okay. And no, I encourage, I'm I'm confident enough in my my bangs supremacy, which I have to be very careful the way I say that, mm -hmm. um, that I, I'm fine with, with anybody getting bangs. I encourage it. Yeah. It's, it's a refresh. It'll change your life. But this one I like a lot. I'm just not even super super chatted. Every sunny kiss begins with Billy Kay. Oh. Uh, me Norma Mister. says Kate. You, uh, then he says Alex, you look like the Linder after a bender noise. Seems very mean spirited. Uh, and Corey <laughs> says to the next next week I'll have to read the scoops in Finn's accent because he too was born in Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland. Oh, I love that. Um. Uh. Okay. So there's a few jukeboxes, and then we're out of here. Okay. Um, there's although oh, there are no Randy Ricky Rain, there are no Ricky what? Rainbows. no Ricky Rainbows, and I know and there was a specific thing, watching, yeah. So, yeah, the seasons are watching Dancing with the Stars, so okay, so we don't need it now. Sorry, now we're gonna have to go out on Dusty. Apparently, he's gonna be called to the Great Beyond. You're assuming that he's. Gonna I'm, hack I'm, in. I'm, I'm assuming he'll 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 hack into my I thing to the to my bro. haunted wife. Louisville says William Regal sings This Kiss by Faith Hill. My, can I tell you a quick story? I'll be so fast. My mom <laughs> sure. hates this song. My mom hates this song so much. My mom, in the middle of like a JC Penny or wherever you would hear this song, would be like, if I could grant you one wish, I wish you could see the way you kiss. She's like, with poverty and all the things going on in the world, world hunger is running rampant. There are wars going on. The one wish you have is that you could see the way you kiss. Get out of here. My mom was not into the song. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Wow. <laughs> I don't want another heartbreak. I don't need another turn to cry. No. I don't want to learn the hard way. Baby, hello. Oh, no, goodbye. But you got me like a rocket shooting straight across the sky. It's the way you love me. It's a feeling like this. It's centrifugal motion. It's perpetual bliss. It's that pivotal moment. It's ah, impossible. This kiss, this kiss, unstoppable. This kiss, this kiss. All right, enough of that. Um, since your mom hates the show, the song, I'm not going to read any more of it. Um, uh, <laughs> Tom LaValle uh, singing I'm Just Ken. Um, uh, Tony D singing I'm Just Ken from Barbie. You are Kenneth. Well, here we go. Doesn't seem to matter what I do. I'm always number two. No one knows how I tried. Oh, oh, I have feelings that I can't explain. Driving me insane. All my life been so polite. But I'll sleep alone tonight. Because I'm just Ken. Anywhere else I'd be a 10. Is it my destiny to live and die? A life of brawn fragility? I'm just Ken. Where I see love, she sees a friend. Where it will take for her to see the man behind the tan and fight for me. I think Luke Gallows should probably sing that last line. Um, hold on. Um, There's nothing wrong with blonde that, fragility, okay? Yeah, nothing wrong with it. Uh, Tiffany <laughs> sings Kiss by Prince and the Revolution. I thought I was going to have to do impressions when she got called up to the main roster, but here no, we are. No, no, no. William Regal's not on TV very often. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's been around since the beginning. Braun, Braun Strowman has been injured for, for a year. <laughs> I'm going to do one of his right after you get done. Okay, I was just saying. I have one impression, and I thought I wasn't going to have to do it anymore. But you don't have to be beautiful to turn on me. I just need your body, baby, from dusk till dawn. You don't need experience to turn me out. You can just leave it all up to me. I'm going to show you what it's all about. You don't have to be rich to be my girl. You don't have to be cool to rule my world. Ain't no particular sign I'm more compatible with. I just want your extra time and your kiss. Toodles. Jesse Ozog wants Braun Strowman reading Shakespeare's sonnet 116. He says, love you guys. Here we go. We love you too. Let me not to the merge of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love when which altered when it alteration finds or bands with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark. 
that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth unknown, although his height be taken, loves not time's fool. Though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come, love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me prove, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. Get these saps! Sean's here. We're going to have to pipe in the silence again because it's so loud. <clears throat> Listen. I've never drank alcohol in my life, but oh my um, you guys have driven me to something worse. No, no, oh, Sean, no. No, no. <laughs> Not Pride. No. Are they sponsoring us? Don't give them that. I money. wish. I Dang. wish. <laughs> they could have a right where my face is. They could put a logo right in the center of the screen. All I know is them. death and despair. Wow. And this show going over, it's a lot of time. Mm. Well, Corey, Brendan had some scoops that we had to read. And <clears> also, <throat> we made a bunch of money, so... I mean, I mean, that's also also <laughs> this happened. Also, it's this painful. happened, Sean. This it's happened. Painful. So we had a lot to talk about today. Also, you're that's extending really... the show when you do this, but that's all right. I mean, like, it, what, what, what's the matter now? Luis bills by the hour. Like, <laughs> what the hell does it matter once we go past two? <laughs> Might as well go two and a half at that he point. He earned it. He's earned it. Yeah, it, his keep with it, this looks, one. it looks like it. <laughs> it looks like it. Um, he's pulling God. up song lyrics. He's pulling up sonnets now. He's moderating the chat. He's keeping it's, it's funny because I was at the gym like 20 minutes ago. I was just finishing up my stairs and I was like, maybe I'll call in while I'm doing the stairs, like do the one of the little Roman Reigns videos. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was like, no, nah, surely, surely they're done by now. They're done. It's midnight. Like they, they well, could not no. still be on the air. And then I drove home. <laughs> Actually, I stopped. I filled up. I filled up the Bronco with gas, mm -hmm. got the prime, and then came here. And, and here you guys were. We had a lot of we had a lot of puns. And yeah. we had a mm -hmm. lot to talk about. Yeah, we shared we shared some memories. Do you think you guys yeah. think I'm going to win the big cheese championship? Yes. Sure. Yes, of course. Why wouldn't you? I should have guessed. Yeah, you should. Do you want to sing a song while you're here? Because there's a request that you sing. Hot I like know me. there is, but I feel like it should instead be an impersonation of me from one of you two singing. Alex, hot. that sounds like a great move from you. <sighs> I mean, I suppose. I, I do one impression that I already did. You know did. the words, the hotline bling. So this oh, will well, be, that's... I will be able to. To test you on this one. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like Luis has got to find me the lyrics, otherwise I. I got don't... the lyrics. Okay, I got the lyrics. Well, and you, I guess you could do an impersonation I, I got them of right yourself. Here, man. I could just write them down, but I can, mm -hmm. I can. Bam, so found funny him. how he went here go. to scold us, and now he's like, "I want to participate." No, no, I just want to see how this goes. Uh, I just want to see if this can piss me off any more, uh -huh. any more than uh -huh. I already am. Uh huh. <clears throat> Uh, so this is just an, this is an impersonation of uh, Denise's impersonation of you. You used oh, to call okay. me on my cell phone late at night when you need my love. Call me on my cell phone late at night when you need my love. And I know when that hotline bling, that can only mean one thing. I know when that hotline bling, that can only mean one thing. I'm eating leather. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're the best. Anyway. Denise, who, yeah. I'll just leave it The there. chat said that Denise stole my, my gimmick by getting bangs, but I feel like they're very different. Yeah. I feel secure enough in my own bang surprise. Has anybody asked you to sing She Bangs yet by Ricky Martin? Uh, no. I think, I think earlier. I think, like, maybe like... Oh, not today, ago. but yeah. No, no, not Months today. ago. Yeah. I think, yeah, about a year ago. Yeah, it's kind of weird that I throw out that song. Like Ricky Martin's sixth, sixth biggest hit, 
mm-hmm. you guys are like, oh, well, not not tonight, obviously, <laughs> but in the past. Mm-hmm. Yes, Ricky Martin's sixth biggest hit, but William Hung's like first biggest hit. So that's yeah. that's also true. Yeah. That's also true. We've sung a lot of songs on the show. Mm-hmm. We have. Oh. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna determine where where this ranks on the Ricky Martin's biggest hits list. Okay. Um, okay. Any any guesses here? Uh, I'm gonna say four. 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 Whoa! Four. You think it's a four? okay? All right, all Jeez. the eggs in that basket. I see. So like four. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. I I can only name one other one, which I know is his first biggest hit. Well, so it's possible there are other ones that I don't know of. He had a number one hit with Livin' La Vida Loca. Very that's, that's, number, that's number one, obviously, yes. She's All I Ever Had got to number two. Oh. I don't know that song. Ooh. It is his third biggest hit. Uh, okay, okay. It ranked uh, number 12 on the, the U.S. Uh, Hot 100. And Nobody Wants to Be Lonely with Christina Aguilera only got to number 13, so... You guys wow. are wrong. Okay. I fear you are owned. Uh, I mean, if it's Price is Right rules, you thought it was. Game. You thought it was sixth. We, yeah. we got we got closer without going. Listen, over. don't make me listen. I can manipulate the details because Menudo was a thing. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. Now, if you want to include Menudo in there, all right. <laughs> you, you were like, oh, well, if we're talking Menudo, I'm an encyclopedia of Menudo. Jeff Derrick's the answer to this question. Shake Your Bon Bon only hit number 22. No. I remember them really. really f- it It's really weird when you go back and look on the Billboard charts and you see, yeah. like, so much of the stuff that was, like, number one on TRL, like, barely yeah. cracked the top 20. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like, I'm not sure that NSYNC had many number one hits. Which no, is... because there's a there's a whole thing about how they and the Backstreet Boys had the same manager, though. And they were, like, pitted against each other intentionally. Of course. In so sync. Had... With, with the question, we're all, we're all wondering, why does SRS know Ricky Martin's five biggest hits? Well, there's this incredible website called fucking Wikipedia. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it's www.fuckingwikipedia.com. <laughs> Money. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, thank you for that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> NSYNC had one number one hit. Do you know what it is? Um, can I get an album? Was it off of No Strings Attached? No, you cannot get an album. <sighs> they existed not... for like four years. Deal with right. it. Um, it's, what, it's, what are we doing? An album? It, it's too. It's too easy for it to be bye bye bye. Fair. If that's so the I way feel you like want to go, or maybe I, like... I asked that. Because it's obvious, and I wanted you to say something like "Music of My Heart" with Gloria Estefan. No, I don't. Think I was I was going to go with the ballad "This I Promise You." Played at many a school dance. God, God must have spent a little more time on you. God must have spent a little more time on you. Hit eight, you casual. <laughs> you casual. This I promise you. Barely cracked the top five. No. How about this one? This I promise you is like their fifth biggest hit. Mm. Is it bye bye? Bye 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 hit number four. Mm. See? Music of my heart with Gloria Estefan hit number two. Really? And it's gonna be me was a number one song. Really? And girlfriend (laughs) featuring Nelly hit number five as well. What about uh, tearing up my heart? How how far did that go? Number uh, fifty nine. Can what? you believe that? Tearing up my heart didn't get the top. Wow. Didn't get the top. No. Not the top fifty. I drive the myself crazy. Sixty seven. Didn't even hit the That's top forty. Crazy. Jesus. That Wild, crazy. right? Wait, how do you know this much in St. Alex, but no Full House to the point where I can't even make a Geo reference on here? You could um, not escape it. Here's here's how, here's how, because uh, during the years of 1999 and 2000, when I would come home for lunch, my roommate had TRL on mm. every single goddamn day. 
Yeah. Fair enough. Fair that, enough. It, yeah. So that's why. That's why. Should I dip into the O Town Wikipedia? <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're Are good on sure? that. Sure. Yeah. They had a song about ejaculating in they your did. sleep. And they did. Mm hmm. Let, 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 just for the sake of curiosity, let's see how, how high a song like that gets on the charts. Oh, top 10. Top 10. That would be tearing up my heart. That By like, like 30 like... spots almost, right? Wow. A, a song that a completely manufactured boy band off of a reality show sang about them bussing in their sleep got to number 10. Thank you, Shabuken, for 10. this, by the way, because this is what I was going to say. You've gone on too late. Also, Sean, how many number ones did NSYNC have? And it wasn't the one with Gloria Stefan. Let's dive into O-Town. At least I'm making up for the amount that Luis is going to need to be. To, for, for what? <laughs> for you to click these? At this point, I think we get we're going to, have to cut Luis off at two hours because nothing productive happens after that point. Are you, whoa, 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 whoa! That's when we need the most. He's pulling up song lyrics. The ghost of sonnets, the ghost movies. of Dusty Rhodes was going to recite the lyrics to two songs, and we were going to be out, and that was going to be it for the night. But now, well, now we're sitting here talking about how All or Nothing by O Town got higher on the charts than Bye Bye Bye. That's that's wild. That's crazy. That is wild. That's what we're doing, sitting here talking about, uh, yeah, together with uh, Chris Farley's brother. I watched yeah. that show. It was great. R.I.P., uh, I think it was Michael Ciccioni. That's who it was. They they had a, a character that was terminally ill, and he was like, shoot, terminally ill, and died. R.I.P. Wow. Sad. R.I.P. R.I.P. indeed. <laughs> Well, SRS after two hours is what we get. The lender on suitcase. Only behind the paywall, man. That's, That's paywall action, the, baby. Paywall action. You gotta, you gotta, gotta pay. Subscribe. You gotta pay to, to watch Linda on WWE 2K. Because <laughs> That's the pull, pull up, pull up Perry Saturn on Maxine Dupree. Here you go. How many number one hits did the Backstreet Boys have? I'm gonna say. Two. Okay, Kate, get off Wikipedia. I'm not on Wikipedia. I was pulling up super chats because someone's got to do their job here. The Backstreet Boys. Mm -hmm. How many number ones? Three. How about a big fat zero? No way. Never. Carson Daly ain't, ain't picking shit for Billboard. That's for damn sure. Wow. Evidently. Jeez. That is crazy. I thought Quit playing sure. games with my heart in 96 got wow. to two, and that's the highest. I want it that way. How had that get? Yeah. Number six. Number six. Didn't even crack the top five. Didn't even crack the top five. Wow. All I have to give got to number five. Everybody Not back even back. Everybody? everybody. Everybody got to four, and that was a banger. Like that. Was that a banger. Listen, that was a banger. Uh, you know before I was buying pay-per-views for wrestling, mm -hmm. uh, the very first pay-per-view I ever watched was Backstreet Boys in concert at Jocelyn Young's house for a sleepover. That's Listen, right. I know Justin Timberlake's dicking around with his solo tour, but if he if he was like, let's get NSYNC back together and Backstreet Boys will open for us, the number of venues they would sell out yeah. with this generation of... I mean, nobody has disposable income, but people will go no. into debt over it at this they point. Will. They, they would, it's true. Absolutely. It's true. They shut down the city when they came to Rupp Arena. I couldn't do anything. Which, I mean, two of them are from here, but still. Two of them are from there. From Lexington, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know it. But. I don't know why I would. <laughs> but 98 Degrees is a number one hit. Welcome to Sourgrass where we review NXT. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what we're here here. to talk about. You, you guys, this is what you get. Me Norman says, here's another $5 for the best $5 in the big business. Wait for that victory lap tour tomorrow because I'm excited. Can the lenders sing? I want it that way. Got to carry I mean, over. No, we only sing that. the hits, and that wasn't a number one. If someone pays for us to sing things, we usually do that, Sean. All right, fine, whatever. Go ahead. And by that, I mean Alex usually does that. Yeah, I, I usually do. I mean, usually. Uh... 
Let's see if I can find it. Here's a good one. Limp Bizkit never charted above 65. 65? That Not even with rolling, 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 rolling. What? Wait, 98 Degrees had a number one? Yes, they did. It took him. It, Joe and Mariah Carey had to help him. They had to get some reinforcement, some interference. It's like having Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso run out. <laughs> Being like, we got to get to number one. How do we do it? It's Let's Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. <laughs> That's not enough. Where's Joe? He's good too. <laughs> That's what they had to do. You really needed an all-star cast to crack that top five. You needed Gloria Stefan. You needed Ryan Carey. Yeah, but Santana Smooth was number one for like a year. Forever. <laughs> you are my fire. The one desire. Believe when I say I want it that way, but we are two worlds apart. Can't reach to your heart when you say that I want it that way. Tell me why he ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why he ain't nothing but a mystic. Tell me why he, I never want to hear you say. I want it that way. Thank you. Remember when Sean got in the chat and was like, what the fucking shit is this? Too late. I'm I'm directing this yeah. show now. I am now the executive producer of this program. Wow. Kevin How about Dunn this one? Gone. Rob Thomas of Matchbox 20 <laughs> has as many number one hits as Limp Biscuit. 98 degrees in sync O Town and Backstreet Boys combined. Wow. <laughs> was it smooth? This is like the Kurt Angle what? five star match bullshit. This is one <laughs> of them was smooth. Do you know what the other one was? Uh, it's not Matchbox 20, it's solo Rob Thomas or it's Matchbox No, it's Matchbox 20. Okay. I'll give you that one. They had some slappers. 3 a.m. It wasn't. 3 a.m. didn't even chart what? on the top 100. It's fucked up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Just somebody joined just now. Pretty messed up. Imagine messed listening up. in audio form. <laughs> the yeah. former prime minister of uh, the UK wants to know where your cats are. Uh, they're all downstairs, they're usually not allowed in my office. Okay. Um, and Shabugan asks, uh, How many number ones did the Spice Girls have in the UK? Oh, they probably had a couple. Let me let me see. Uh, want to be I saw a hilarious clip. I, I think it's. Graham Norton over in the UK, he had Emma Stone on, and she's a major Spice Girls fan, and they like to surprise people. And they're mm. like, you know that two Spice Girls have not been together in years, right? And she starts to freak out, and she's looking for him, and then he goes, and they're not here tonight either. It was fantastic. Uh, Matchbox 20's number one hit was Bent, by the way. Okay. Bent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Which I is how, how I get when I see this show goes over two hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have extended Good God, minutes. let me tell you, the Spice Girls Wikipedia is extensive. There was, mm. There's a lot too of the Spice Girls. They were very important oh, okay. to like. There were like five they members. You got it. Got it. Like was a yeah, thing you like got it. Yeah. That was a yeah, big deal. Yeah. They had one number one hit in the states and. Six consecutive in the UK. Yeah. Nine in the UK total. Um, but yeah, the wannabe was their their one. Of course. And I cannot remember any. I remember Spice Up Your Life. I remember that one. Uh the ballad to become one, I believe, was there. Was that, that was that, that hit number seven? four? Oh no, that was no, that, to, to, to become one, yeah. yeah. Feeling Dreepy says going to big business tomorrow. Looking forward to Sean's victory lap. Could Linda do Mercedes WWE theme? Oh, buddy, let me tell you. I'm, I'm just going to warn you guys. Mute me now if you don't want to see it. Because I'm going to be real obnoxious tomorrow. Earned. Earned. Yeah. Hold on. Let me get it over here so I can do the thing. You will had a dream I had it made and now... 
There's nothing dragging me down. Yeah, because I gun gun pushed it all out the way. Designed to break in. I found my way. Yeah. Now I'm made. Nobody gonna take it. Cause I gone gone push them all out the way. I had a dream that I made it here in the spotlight. Woke up, see my life in the shade. Now that's not quite hustling every day. I'm on my way to that shop light. It's destiny, it's my destiny to be bigger. Yeah, I got fight. And I've had visions of sitting high on my old gold throne, never listening to criticism. I built my own. From the bottom, I've gotten myself in my own zone. Never stop and I made it. And now I ain't going home. Had I dream, I had it made. And now there's nothing dragging me down, down me. Yeah, because I gone, gone, pushed it all out the way. Destined to break in. I found my way. Yeah, now I'm, I'm the blah, 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 blah. You understand. You get the gist. For all the times for Ellie Cease not to be here. <laughs> it's a smart song. Yeah. Hmm. See, Delgado said by the 1990s, many record companies stopped releasing singles altogether. Eventually, a song's airplay points were weighted mm -hmm. more than its sales. That is true. It's true. Yep. It's true. All right. Do we have well, any more? Thing left is, the only thing left is uh, the ghost of Dusty Rhodes. So. <laughs> Good to see you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Sean. Oh, my gosh. Oh, now, Dusty Rhodes. Now that that son of a bitch is gone, I can show up because I don't. I honestly don't like. I can't stand you. Won't, you can't be on. I'm, that's that sounds like heat. I need the scoop about that. That's going up on Fightful oh. Select after this. It's like Sean Ross yeah. F and the Ghost of Dusty Rhodes can't be on the same screen together at the same time. He he blocked me on Twitter, and I have no idea why. <laughs> I, so I'm I'm very upset with him. But anyway, I, he and I have heat, so I'm just gonna go ahead and you go, heat uh, with Sean because he blocked he, you on Twitter. He and Rick Abani said wants the ghost to dust their singing Love Story by Taylor Swift. So I'm going to go ahead and sing that one. Let's see here. All right, here we, let's see if we can get it over here. Thank you. All right, so uh, we were both young when I first saw you. I closed my eyes and the flashback starts. I'm standing there on the balcony on the summer air, Daddy. I see the lights, see the party, the ball gown. And you make your way through the crowd and say, hello. Little did I know, baby, that you were Romeo, if you will. You were throwing pebbles. And my daddy said, stay away from Juliet, daddy. And I was, I was crying on the staircase, begging you, please don't go. And I said, Romeo, take me somewhere we can be alone, baby. I'll be waiting. All that's left to do is run, if you will. You be the prince and I'll be the princess. It's a love story, baby. Just say yes. That's hard times. I think those would be like pretty lovely times. Like if you proposed to no, someone, it, it was, it's hard time because because uh, because I'm going to drink a potion. You understand? That's going to kill me. Not oh. really, but but outwardly appearances would show that I would be dead, and so they would bury me in a tomb, not like under the ground. You understand? But like in a mausoleum. Uh, if you will, and then my boyfriend Romeo is going to come and try and find me, but he's being so distraught by the death of me, he's going to take some of the potion himself and kill himself with the potion. Oh, no. stab him? But he stab himself? I forget what happens. Anyway, he <laughs> yeah, dies, and then, and then I kill myself as well, uh, because that's the story of Romeo and Juliet. So it is hard times. Those are hard times. That's a, that's a very hard, hard point. Yeah, that's some hard times. Uh, T. Lapper Mayhem wants a ghost of Dusty Road singing Kiss from a Rose by Seal. <laughs> and I'm all too happy to regale you with the song stylings of Seal. Hold on. Here we go. Bye, ya, ba da da, ba da da, ba ya, ya, daddy. Bye, ya, ya, ba da da, ba ya, da, da da da, baby. There used to be a graying tower alone on the sea if you will, and you became the light on the dark side of me. Love remained a drug that's the high and not the pill, but did you know that when it snows, baby, my eyes become a large and the light that you shine can't be seen, daddy. Baby, I compare you to a kiss from a rose on the grave. Oh, the more of you I get, the, the stranger it feels, yeah. Now that your rose is in bloom, a light hits the gloom on the grave. 
Bayaya badada bayaya bayaya daddy bayaya badada bayada bayaya and that is hard time daddy beautiful i bet karaoke night in wrestler heaven is a really fun thing oh it's it's the best it's the best it, i believe it i believe it now, now me normas apparently wants you to sing this part ha na 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 everything sucks that's right so uh, we we have overstayed our welcome so much so i'm going to say uh keep cool gabagoos toodles if you will. <laughs>